this way before. Travel through the open door. Circumstances navigate the path. And life happened all so fast. We know we got no means. Some guy can see. I know we, I know we couldn't make it. Even when I'm off feet, I still land on my feet. And nothing can shake me. Cause I know my turn. This is where I am destined to be. I'm not ready to give up. I believe in the miracle of life. Life's a quick for no rehearsal. No quickly, they'll come for your blow. Games to play, can't take it from snow. Cause the devil is a liar. It's all in what you do, hey. Some things you gotta do, hey. Hey, 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 hey. And this fight for me, I'm from the second second, see the blessing in it. From much expected, much is given. When I make the living, now I'm giving back to you, children. Never let the power come first before your happiness. Yes, you can be the best if you go the distance. Mix a little sweat with your persistence. You know that the best things are never instant. Just shine. This my personal statement, run the game like I'm aces, learn and develop, trace it, determined to be the greatest, yeah, bobbing and weaving, they changing up like the seasons, indigenous to the grind, so I do it for all my people, jabbing in competition, back up against the hope, she fighting for recognition, I'm fighting just to promote equality, where we lack it, our pants are slow on our road, I'm confident we are making, focus on common goals, yeah. Give back, give love, give things Never, ever stand tall to fight another day. Two toes, two feet, I stand on the ground. I'm going to battle and fight this final round. Let's break the note of your soul. Don't no quickly, they'll come for your blow. Can't get quick, can't take it from snow. Cause the devil is alive. It's all in what you do, hey. Some things you gotta do, hey, 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 hey. hey. We're going to try it like this one time for the people, man. I appreciate y'all coming in the building. Thank you much. Thank you much. Who we got in the building? What's up, JP? Ever JQ? I supposed to keep the music on, man. Oh, man. Job, man. Fuck you. Hey, sucker. Man, sucking egg. Big homie. Big homie. What's up, Kino? Ricky? KJ? Appreciate y'all. What's up, Adolfo? What's up, Damon? I appreciate y'all coming in here tonight. Hopefully, the stream... Hopefully I'm up to speed with y'all tonight. I think it was maybe because my uh my uh my 
it wasn't fully charged. So anyhow, man, getting great reviews from the screening, man. I'm gonna upload the screening in a in a little bit, the uh, the response from the screening. But I appreciate you guys coming in here tonight. Uh what's the topic of the show? Oh, being black in Buffalo. Yeah, I, I uh I caught up with what happened in Buffalo, and uh, we definitely can talk about that. And um, also, uh, Jamel Charlo said he made ten million dollars. <laughs> Jamel made ten million dollars, y'all. He made ten million dollars, man. And shout out to Jamel Charlo for making ten million dollars versus Costado, man, man. So if Jamel Charlo made the same amount as Caleb Plant made against uh, Canelo. Hey, people at PBC, y'all been getting underpaid, man. Hey, whoever is negotiating Jamel Charlo's pay, I need you, dog. Like I need you in my life. If you got Jamel Charlo ten million dollars, I need you in my life, dog. I'm gonna just keep it a buck. I really, really, really need you in my life, and. Uh, I need you to negotiate some of my property deals, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> you probably can get it. You probably can get it for free. <laughs> so anyways, man, Jamel made $10 million versus, hey, man, he made $10 million. So, so let's take that at face value. If Jamel made $10 million, right? Man, I keep on forgetting it's trailer time, y'all. Let me play trailer. Let me play the trailer, dog. Because we got two days. We got two days, y'all. Two days. You're watching America This Morning. America's number one early morning. Time after time after time, we are watching murderers go free. They hide behind their badges. They hide behind their white privilege. And they use the excuse that they fear for their lives to murder our young people in cold blood. It's done. Eggs, my brother. No, no, no. Don't think about it. All you self-righteous assholes do is march and destroy your own communities. Killing me won't change a goddamn thing. <laughs> different when it's a grown black man standing in the ground. Oh, yo, 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 we got two days to that movie come out. Hey, let me tell y'all this. Sunday, we talking about the movie. We got David Benavidez. That's not, I mean, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna bust an out of shape David Lemieux up. That's not really a fight. It's more of a promotion for whoever he's fighting next and the brand. But uh, we talking about this movie on on uh, on uh, on Sunday. So make sure you are part of the conversation and purchase the movie. Okay, take your time and purchase the movie because we're gonna have a full blown conversation about this on Sunday. And I can't wait to hear your responses. And it's gonna be gonna have a great time and rock out like that. So everybody got homework. Everybody go support Frederick Hawthorne. Checks and balances, May 19th, Malcolm X birthday. I'm actually trying to find us uh, uh, since I'm homeless right now. I'm trying to find a I'm trying to find an upscale steak restaurant to uh, to host uh, Malcolm X birthday. So um, I don't want to go to downtown L.A. because I don't want my grand aunt having to walk. You know, what I mean, I want her to be able just to pull up to the restaurant and get out. So uh, we won't be downtown, but I got to find like an upscale steakhouse in L.A. So any recommendations, feel free to DM me and uh, we'll have a great time. So I don't think it's going to be a show Thursday because I don't think I'll be back in time, but I will do a video or go live at some point, either of the two, and uh, just to celebrate and commemorate uh, Malcolm X and, uh, and uh, you know what I mean? And, but before we jump into the show, I've been having these, I've been having this thought all day today. Farrakhan said uh, Malcolm X betrayed his teacher. Farrakhan betrayed Allah. Farrakhan betrayed Michael Mex because he drove from Boston all the way to Newark, New Jersey, which means he had the plan in his head the whole time. So him carrying that plan in his head the whole time, he betrayed Allah. 
man gonna burn in hell he gonna burn in hell because he never repented for killing Malcolm X never repented you know what I mean oh man so uh another two-time Olympic gold medal showed it oh who's that two-time Olympic gold medalist so um so that's my thoughts on that but anyways man let's jump into this boxing talk man and obviously being black in Buffalo let me put the oh it's moving today I'm not delayed I love it I love it I love it good we starting off real really good and uh we talking about Buffalo being black in Buffalo man uh it's so heart-wrenching man I just posted on my story the 10 people that perished was murdered we got to say murdered because because we need people to know that that man is 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 the devil and I don't care if it's a white person killing black people a black person killing black people you the devil you know and um this story is gonna get a lot of attention because the shooter was was white and i'm all for it i'm 100 for it I, I i think we should give this man everything 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 you can imagine i want him to get beat up i want him to spend 10 years in jail before he gets a death penalty you know what i mean uh i i, I want the worst treatment that that's known to man to happen to this man you understand what I'm saying? I, I'm just being honest. I totally want that. And uh, and I I love how people say we love black people. And we over, we, we give everything, everything. It's kind of like Bob Arum, right? Like in boxing. We give all our emotional capital when a white man destroys our community. Destroys our community. And then we celebrate... Uh, drug dealers who get movie deals we call them great uh drugs in our hood has killed more people i mean it's it's, it's as bad as slavery right uh, in terms of tearing down the community so there is no but in in my argument there is no but i think they deserve the same malice attention that we would that we're going to give this man i don't even know his name uh i uh um some people you have the right to hate <laughs> you know and that man walking into that restaurant i mean walking into that supermarket i believe we have the right to hate the devil i really believe that and uh i'm not the guy that turns the other cheek i'm not i'm not i i, I don't wish that he gets salvation i want that man to burn in hell i want that man uh man i really want that man to burn in hell um but i don't want him to die quick i want him to get the death sentence but there's no death sentence in new york right N maybe it is because california has one and, and typically california parallels new york uh help me out in the chat is there a death penalty in new york and uh i really really want uh him to get the death penalty but i want him to serve 10 years first i want him to get beat up i want him to get you know i want him to be somebody's boyfriend somebody's girlfriend i i believe in stoning somebody to death I believe it should be public. I believe we should be able to destroy these people publicly. I'm just keeping it a buck. I don't believe in uh, um, uh, what's the term? Peaceful deaths, like you get the injection. You know what I mean? I don't. Nah. Yeah, and another thank you, Dana, for bringing that up. We had two in less than 24 hours, man, and. Uh, it, it, it's it's and notice that these are happening where people can't carry guns california new york and people say get rid of guns if more people in that damn grocery store had guns that i hate to say like just a handful of people would have got murdered i hate I'm, I'm not being disrespectful to the dead but i would believe it would be lower than 10. And be honest with you, he may not have done it because I don't think he wanted to die. He knew he wasn't going to die. He knew he was going to get caught. Oh, yeah. It, they don't have it. Okay. You understand? And uh, if you are in open carry states, I advise you to teach your kids, teach your mother, teach your grandmother, your grandfather how to use a gun. Make sure it's small enough that they can carry you you know and and uh teach them how to carry guns 
uh, teach them how to protect themselves. You know, at the very least, they should know how to pepper spray. Yeah, right, right, KP, you're right. You know, uh, pepper spray at the very, at the very least. Like I yell at Dre if she ain't running with her pepper spray. Like I literally, like, 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 like I would dog. I don't have a dog, but like, like a dog got hit by a car. Like how could that happen? You know, like I, I'm really on it about that. You know, and I'm, um, I don't, I don't let her take her purse in the rest. I mean, when she's by herself, she take a little change purse. You know, um, you know, because back when when I was you know, of the world, you know, I bought everything that was high end. So she got all these high end purses and stuff like that. And, uh, um, I, uh, I don't want her being a target, you know, 113 pound woman. I don't want her being a target. And, and, uh, um, so tell your family to arm themselves. It's very, very important. Okay. And, uh, protect themselves and make them understand, um, that someone's always watching them. Uh, please do that. And, uh, you know, it, it's just that important. But the phone lines are open. Yeah, the phone lines are open. So feel free to call in and uh, feel free to beam in. Yeah, Texas, you don't you won't see nothing like that in Texas. You won't because bullets are coming back. I wouldn't even I've been to Texas a lot, as you guys know. Uh, I don't believe in road. I don't believe there's road rage in Texas. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it, man. Everyone carries. Ain't nobody fighting in Texas. Ain't no one fighting in Georgia, right? Nah, man. Why would you? It don't make sense to fight. Yo, 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 yo. What it do? What it do? 972. What's going on, Fred? Hey, how you feel, dog? Good, dog. I just take this board, dog, man. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, that's love. All the time. Uh, so I, I do want to touch on Errol and Bud. Yeah, please. But also, I guess I get I get that out the way first. Mm-hmm. Man, they need to come off that bullshit. Go ahead and pay them, man, bro. How, how they got? Yeah, they setting Bud up forty for- and man, they, they need to quit with that shit, man. They got forty and fifteen for Canelo, easy off the rip. Errol and Bud, good for at least good, a good four or five a piece, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I, I understand. Yeah. I understand this business that goes into it. I get it, but hey, we shouldn't even be having this kind of discussion. In my opinion, how 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 are we gonna try to downplay the biggest fight in boxing? Which personally, also, I think that kind of irks Canelo a little bit that it's the biggest fight in boxing that he's uninvolved in it. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. Good point. But uh, as far as your other topic, Fred, it's uh, kind of crazy, man. You know, I'm down here in Texas, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I come from a, a mixed family. Mm-hmm. You know, we got a little bit of everything in my family. Sure. So uh, I, I don't know if you recall whenever the, the shooting in El Paso occurred a few years mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this guy actually when all the news ended up coming out, this guy actually ended up living about 20 or 30 minutes away from us. Mm-hmm. So it's it hit kind of close to home. And, you know, now we got what happened to Buffalo. And it's a shame, man, because it's almost to the point now to where, you, like you said, I got two cars and I'm almost to the point where I, I'm, I'm about to put one in each car. Mm-hmm. You have to. At least. You have to. At least. You have to. And it, it's... I don't remember it that way either, man. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna get off here in a second, just the free up the line for it. But I had one more point, and I guess a question for you. Mm-hmm. How can I say this? Say it. Uh, <laughs> this is a shop, man. We ain't got no filter, man. Fred, yeah. Fred. Yeah. Fred. Yeah. How is it that? they keep getting taken into custody without a motherfucking scratch, man. Because same this... thing in El Paso. Same thing in El Paso, man. Dude just laid down 20 people. They, they, they look like they just walking gently across the street. Mm-hmm. But but me or you can move too quickly in a certain scenario, traffic stop, dark alley, whatever. We can move too quickly. And mm-hmm. that's 
that's enough. Mm-hmm. It's it's the, the easy answer is whose whose system is it? Why do we expect to be treated the same as them? That that is wild to me, man. Yeah, that equality movement kind of tricked us and bamboozled us, man. You know, we sit and fighting for equality, and we see the inequalities every day. <laughs> we wow, got to fight man. for ownership, entrepreneurship, man. We're never, you're never going to be equal to the people that's paying you. You're never going to be equal to the I'm, people that sent this in you. It, it just that that part of it continues to just blow my mind, and I'm not, I'm not very, I'm not very up there in age. I'm only 29, man, but it's to the point now, you know, to where we're seeing this. And vice versa, though, I've seen off-duty law enforcement shoot two teenagers in the mm, head over Jesus. stolen truck seats. Wow. Jesus. And, yeah, he was convicted. I'm just saying, though, his it's, life is, is very invaluable. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 No, 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 no. you're making good points, but I never expect to be treated like a like others i don't even like in my real life do i use my platform to echo the sentiment of the people i do 100 percent. in my in my in my real life i never expect them to treat me better than they treat them their their contemporaries never that's why i stay out of it i really hope i really hope we stop seeing this man but I, i'm back in the chat for it no i appreciate you dog Oh yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Steven said they got to take pay cuts, man. And uh that's the argument that I don't understand with uh with us as a people. Why do we expect to be treated equal? Why do we expect fairness? We expect fairness in every situation. I never expect fairness. That's why I said we gotta dominate people, man. When when someone throws a rock, you throw two bricks. You dominate people, man. Stop. Don't go into any situation thinking you got to be fair. You got to win. You got to win. You got to win. And people and people believe in humanity when it comes to business. Nah, I ain't no damn humanity. You, you negotiate and you fight for what's right. And in the real world, that's why you never... Listen. I... Um, I'll stop talking about people if they wave the the red flag and all that stuff. But I don't accept in my real life. I'm gonna be honest. I don't accept apologies and then bring them back in my life. It ain't happening. Frederick ain't happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? It ain't happening, dog. It ain't happening. And uh, because snakes, I'm gonna give you guys what I believe snakes only shed skin snakes only shed skin so, so when you you got to kill the snake kill the snake kill the snake and if you just allow the snake to apologize then boom oh patricia the barbershop will be back the first week of june you know what i mean it will be back the first week of june i'm just homeless right now patricia i'm homeless you know what i mean i'm homeless i ain't got no home I ain't got no job. I ain't got no place to go. <laughs> so uh, I'm getting some work done. The home will be done June. The anticipated date is June 1st. I, I'm, I'm, I will be in there June 1st, no matter what, you know, and uh, it, it is what it is, man. And uh, I'm on skid row. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm on Skid Row, dog. I'm with family, dog. I'm with family, and and I'm in a room with, with all their stuff. You know what I mean? So that's why I got the background up, you know. And uh, I I just want to respect their privacy, you know, because once it hits the internet, you never know who who can control it. So, um, um, so that's why I got this this buffer up. You know, it's not it's not because I'm hiding anything. I'm just in someone else's house. That's all. And um, um. But yeah, man, it's uh, it's heart wrenching to say the least. You know, ten people die, ah, uh, ten people get murdered, and it's very polarizing when it's a a, a white supremacist. It's very pol polarizing, and I think we got to keep on using these terms: white supremacist, white supremacist, white supremacist. 
It was a hate crime. It was a hate crime. It was a hate crime. And where is the nation of Islam? Where's the Crips and Bloods? Where's the drug dealers? Where's all the tough guys in prison? Show me. Show me who you are. Don't tell me who you are. Show me who you are. Show me. Show me who you are. Y'all tough. Y'all big. Y'all bad. Y'all want that. Y'all want that. Uh, y'all want that IG. Y'all want that. Uh, that Instagram and YouTube clout. Show me who y'all really are. You know what I'm saying? And but they not. They not. They just gonna throw up gang signs and crip walk. Gang signs and crip walk and um, and and, and show they underwear. Show they fucking underwear. You know what I mean? Show they boxer briefs. You know. That's all they're gonna do. Crip walk, gang sign, whoop, whoop. You know what I mean? That's all. That's all they're gonna do. We got they're real cowards. And I talk about that in checks and balances. I call gang banger cowards, nation of Islam a coward. Nation of Islam is like the police. They only react. You know what I mean? They only react, man. In 2022, they only react. You know what I mean? They out trying to get money. You know, they out panhandling like all these other fake revolutionaries, you know. So it is what it is, man. And uh um uh, th- that's what I stand on, man. And, uh, oh man. So, so hopefully everyone takes a moment to celebrate Malcolm X birthday, May 19th. You know what I mean? We don't even celebrate my birthday in the shop. I don't think it's that, I don't think it's as important as, uh, as Malcolm X. You know, I, 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 I think we all should celebrate an ancestor, take the time, whoever your ancestor is, you know, celebrate them. It's, it's really, really, really that important. And I have a video I want to show y'all. The Trollo brothers. People say, Fred, why are you always hating on the Charlos? Because they give me ammunition. They hate themselves. There's a piece of them that really hates themselves. Watch this video, y'all. They, they have bullied. Watch that. Knock his ass out. Home alone looking ass nigga. Fucking bully, man. Fucking fake ass bully, man. We got to call this fake shit out, man. Y'all need to see this shit again. He won't do this to David Benavidez. Knock his ass out. I'm a long looking ass nigga. Knock his ass out. I'm a long looking ass nigga. And you can tell that man is in his right mind. Oh, appreciate you, big homie Coop. Hey, he said, the dude said, hey, I like your shirt. He said, thanks. (laughs) He said, he said, thanks. And then he went on to smack the man's smack the man's camera. But here's the catch, though. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny. Like, for real. Like, when you watch it, it's like, ha, ha, ha. It's funny. But, man, how about David Benavidez? Oh, it's easy to bully Fred from Barbershop Conversations. Oh, it's easy. Oh, yeah, it's easy to do that. It's easy to smack a phone out of a fan's hand. Oh, that's easy. That's easy to do, right? But you know what's hard to do? Step in that ring with David Benavidez. That's hard. You know what's hard? Signing a contract to David Benavidez. That's hard. That's why we got these fake people out here, man. We got to challenge these people, man. Sign a contract. He ain't fought nobody in five. He ain't fought no one in five years, man. He disrespects Jared Heard with this woman. He disrespects the fan, knocks his phone out, and he disrespects the media. I'm telling y'all, if he does this shit to you, sue Showtime, which is owned by CBS, shoot, sue PBC, and file a criminal suit 
of assault against Jamal Charlo. Don't take listen. This is uh th this is just a it just keeps happening and keeps happening and keeps happening because you know why? There's no repercussions for him. There's no repercussions for him, man. Uh, and, and and it's like why we just can't he he did that because he asked a stupid question according to him but you know what the guy said he says don't kill the messenger i'm only don't kill i'm i'm he says don't kill the messenger i'm only talking to the media i'm only using uh i'm quoting uh tim zoo right he prefaced it to protect him number one and so to say to charlos i know how you react to questions that I know you're emotionally immature. I know that, but um, um, but for real, for real, for real, for real. I just want to ask this question because I am an Australian news outlet, and I have a better relationship with that Australian fighter than I have with you. And he smacks the man, he intimidates the man and smacks the guy. I don't like that shit, man. I don't like it. I don't like it. That's why I said we need to stop covering these guys, man. I would never disrespect. Matter of fact, I've never done it in offense. I've only done it in self-protection. I don't I, I don't move like that, man. And 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 the character of a man should always be on display, man. Should always be on display. And we allow these cowards, man. Who cares if he beats up Frederick Hawthorne? He's supposed I'm, I'm, I'm only going to use me as an example because it makes the show go, right? I'm not going to say, hey, Todd Williams, he'll beat you up. Then you get mad. and I'm just going to use me. Five foot seven Frederick Hawthorne. Yeah, he beats me up. I'm going to sue the living shit out of Al Heyman and CBS. The living kazoo out of them. What? And I'm going to press charges. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. I, I'm not going to excite it neither. But if you can't protect me, I'm going to use the law to protect me. 831, what's up? Hey, Fred, how's it going? Hey, what's popping, though? How you, how you been? Uh, no, pretty good. I talked to you last night. Uh-huh. Yeah, I talked to you last night. Okay. Uh, I'm My bad. Talking about, <laughs> you're talking about the Charlos now, right? Yeah, I just played that clip, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that's not the right way to do things, but we would – I. I I put it this way, considering that, uh, you know, they're African-American, they, I claim to be African-American, they, they are, uh, and we're making up 13% of the population. Some of the things that are happening, the systemic oppression that we're going through as a people, I can overlook the frustration he may have had towards that, that one individual. Mm -hmm. um, this, you know, a lot of us are feeling really stressed in regards to race relations uh very poor treatment that we're receiving from from white people and other buffer uh, races that exist in the country who are taking up the same mantle as those who practice uh white supremacy um basically black people get treated very poorly by a lot of different races of people in this country specifically by whites who are who are racist so i can understand and I, I say that it was wrong, like you said, but I can understand the frustration that the brother may have had toward that individual. Uh, and it could have been just uh, backlash from other experiences he may have had with racist, white, and oppressive uh, systems that all of us have to deal with. So I can forgive him for that. I'll just say, you know, let's, let's try to do better the next time. But that's very small potatoes compared to the things that we're experiencing as a people where that uh, monster went in and murdered 10 black people while they were shopping for their family for groceries and specifically murdered uh, a lot of uh, black women. Um, we know that when you look into uh, grocery stores, the vast majority of the people you see in there are going to be women. He went into a black grocery store or grocery store that serves the black community and murdered a bunch of elderly uh, and um, and younger women. Uh, one woman, he shot her and then stood over the top of her and blew her brains out. Uh, 
uh, turned and saw a white male and uh, pointed his gun at him and then apologized for doing so and continued to, and continued to kill him. Free. Um, if that don't, if that doesn't wake you up, nothing will. Right. Uh, this is a, a continued stream of events that shows that there is a large group of people who are supported by systemic uh, structures that continue to attack and uh, murder our people and get hit with minimal sentences. There's no way that that individual should have left that scene alive after what he did. Uh, and I think what he did, he even topped Dylan Roof because his death total was higher. So uh, for people out there who um, don't have the ability to protect themselves and their families, and you're African-American, uh, then you lost in the sauce. If all you're thinking about is boxing and sports, and you don't see the writing on the wall, you're going to be a casualty of war. Okay, that's from me to you. Anyone that hears my voice right now, so I would, I would, I would uh, say that you, if you, if you hear, if you see what's going on, if you're alive and well right now, you better be ready to protect your family um, and your community. They said that there was a, uh, I saw an interview where there was a black guy that talked to him the day before he made that attack, where he was getting reconnaissance. He talked to the guy for over an hour. And, you know, even after talking to the guy, he still, it was just ridiculous. There was a guy that talked to him for an hour, bought him a drink, uh, and then uh, the very very next day, he goes in and kills all those people. And I was like, you know, how did this guy see a, and he said that he talked to to him because it was odd to see a white person um, in that area of town just or in that particular area just hanging out and uh, you know he saw that the guy had genius on his shirt or something and he asked him was he really a genius and they started talking about critical race theory and a bunch of other things and uh, he said he saw some jitteriness the, the guy was jittery so he felt like there was something wrong but he did never alert anyone I just think man our people are just naive what's going on you know, we really need to try to take inventory of the situation we're in, not just today, but from a historical standpoint, too. And I think that's the problem. We all know the history of this country, but we're completely lost. As I said yesterday, lost in the talk. We don't have an idea of what's going on. Um, and uh, time to go on high alert. These folks are not playing. I mean, and uh, what gets me as well is you talk about these guys that are uh, so-called gangsters, tough guys, you go down and just they, they see another black person look at them wrong. They're ready to lay them down. But then these guys like Dylan Roof, this monster that did what he did over the weekend, all these different people coming into our communities attacking our families and now attacking our women and children. And you don't hear nothing. You don't hear, you don't hear anything from these tough guys. That'll lay you down just for stepping on your shoes, stepping on their shoes. I mean, it's it's we we we're in a bad way, man. That's all I'm, you know. And you know, the thing is, that you it's hard to. I mean, and you could say, okay, well, I'm successful. Uh, you know, I've got a certain amount of money, a certain amount of success. I can really just lay back and not really worry about much because I've, you know, I've, I've made my I've made a life for myself. You could say that, but just like Malcolm X said. A man will never rise above the state of his people. As long as we're considered the refuse of this society, and really the refuse of the planet, because we don't think collectively, act collectively, and hold each other accountable. And uh, so, and hold those who owe us and mistreat us accountable. We don't do that. From a collective standpoint, we got a lot. We got a long way to go. I think it really comes back to trying to live right, do the things that God would have us mm. to do, 
stay in prayer and get ready to take action. I, you know, for me, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not a religious man. I don't go to church all the time or anything like that, but I do have a relationship with God. You know, when it's all said and done, I also got a relationship with Smith and West. Right. I also got a relationship with, you know, with Smith and West and, and Ruger. So if someone, well, you, you know, you know, so, I mean, it's, it, you know, I, I, uh, I, I say praise, praise the Lord, but pass the ammunition. And these individuals that uh, that are out here, um, not ready to protect their families, um, you know, running around, you know, wanting to get high, drink, talk about sports all day, and not understand that this world is collapsing on us. You're going to be a cavalry. I said a lot there. No, yeah, and... and... No, you go ahead, KP. Yeah, what's up, Mike? Glad Mike is on. Mike be hitting some good points, man. Mike be hitting some good points all the time when he come on. And you're right, Mike, because a lot of the times what we're seeing in our communities, like like you said, is people are advocating for a culture of um, let's say the the rappers that are claiming they shooting everybody on record, but now they going to jail for all these charges. But they said, Hey, I didn't really do that. You see what I'm saying? Like, hey, hold on, man. You you've been talking about killing people for ten years on record. You 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 ain't killed nobody. You know, sold all this mass murder to the community, and now when it's time to do something, it's like, hey, man, I really didn't do that, man. But I I just want to keep my millions, and I just want to go back home. No, bro. Right. You've been claiming to be a menace for ten years. You've been claiming you kill people for ten years. You know what I'm saying? So like. It's like a total, it's a flip-flop though, Mike, because the people that don't get respected in, in the black community is the people that get educated. The people that do get respected is the people that are uneducated and they get shamed. So the people that get educated get shamed for being educated and the people that don't get educated get praised. Right. That's the community. Yeah, I think it's really, I think it's really, and here's the thing, man, um, I, I, I think Fred brought up uh, the other day. He was he asked me if I, uh, you know, if I graduated from USC, University of Southern California, and I, and I did. I got my doctorate out there. But what I'll let you, what I will say, is that education nowadays is just as much of an indoctrination than it is anything else. Yes, it yeah, is. You are correct. It's right. Uh, especially when you start getting up in those higher levels, right? It's an indoctrination. Really, from, from point A to from point A Facts. to Z. Facts. And true education, is understanding true education is understanding your environment, understanding the world that you live in and how it functions, and the and the elements that take place that interact within that environment. And if we don't understand that everything that we see on this television, everything that we see in these movie theaters, is all about the propagation of white supremacy. And the oppression of people of color, just specifically black people, uh, then we're lost in the stuff. I went to go see a movie today, Doctor Strange, and when I when I go see these movies, I don't go see them that often. But when I go to see the movies, I don't go to see them to uh, look at the special effects or even to get into the storyline of the movie. I'm looking at what they're telling me. The new or the upcoming ideas or objectives. That they push it, yep. Huh? Yep, the ideas that they're pushing through the movie, yep. Exactly, what's coming up? What is what is white supremacy pushing? What are they expecting? Or what's coming down the line from that particular ideology? That's what I'm looking at the movie for. I'm looking at what's coming and what's in, what's in progress right now. We, when it's off, I'm, I'm looking at the movie from that perspective. And so uh, we just have to get, we have to be thinkers. We have to realize that there are huge think tanks that there's a reason why. This kid had a 180-page manifesto. He didn't create that by himself. He was born and bred. He was raised to do what he did on Saturday, man. He was raised to be a race soldier. And he didn't learn. I, I heard Dr. Boyce walking, you know, on the talking about some uh, 
he said something about these kids are learning how to use all these weapons playing Call of Duty. Man, he didn't learn how to murder them people from Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, I take he I don't take them. I don't take Boyce Walker seriously, Mike, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because he has been quote unquote doing financial education for like fifteen years on YouTube and I don't really see anything that he's got out of it. All I continue to see him do is to simp and pander to his audience in order to get them to continue to support his, you know, whatever he's doing. You, you know what I'm saying, Mike? So I it's kind of like, go ahead. I agree because he burned me out $350. Mm. You know, yeah. you know, money, but you know, he burned me out $350 and they were running, they were running a NFT scam on him. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I see. The NFT mm -hmm. market is, is drawn, it's, it's, it's pretty much the gold rush in NFTs is over. In my opinion, if you don't have that big money, you don't you you you're not gonna win. You're not gonna win in that game. And what I've seen, but I but I paid a month worth subscription for his NFT training. It cost me three hundred fifty dollars. I got absolutely nothing out of it. But the only thing I got out of it is that uh, that particular market dried up. But I can tell you more about it. I won't. I'll stop there. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah, but yeah, but Mike, that's what I see from him as quote quote unquote supposed to be this financial. Genius, he got the PhD in finance or whatnot, but it's a lot of theory that he uses, but he hasn't put anything together on the ground. You know what I mean? So it's like he got all this theory and knowledge, of, 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 so to speak, but nothing is ever established right. and built from that. I mean, he's set. I've seen him with Dr. Anderson before. Nothing's come of it. Dr. Anderson is the one that set up a lot of different things in the 70s, you know, the affirmative action and all of that. But when it comes to yeah. voice, it kind of seemed like to me that he was just leading people to vote one way and just vote to see what happens. That's yeah, what that's what I've seen out of him. Yeah, he's a huge capitalist, but I, I would what I would say is that uh, he he yeah I don't really see him as a real legitimate person. Like Fred's <laughs> legitimate. Yeah, that's that's why I like Fred. I still deal with Fred because I know he's a hardworking dude. He you know he's all, he's already successful does a lot of different things but he still gives a voice to the least of these you know what i mean so that's why i deal with forever voice walking voice walking he's always talking about his phd he's not the only one with a phd mm. there's a bunch of high folks with phd that are much more educated than them i'm one of them so i mean so when it's all said and done you know i don't have a phd in finance you know but uh i've got a you know nuclear engineering mechanical engineering Right. So, I mean, the bottom line is he's, he's not the only educated black person around. I think he's just running. It. I didn't appreciate what he did with the NFT thing because they beat me and a whole bunch of other people out of a lot of money. Mm. When you add up, he took that class. Uh, they, the dude's charging $300 yeah. a month for a class, but got absolutely no information. So it was, but it, it's okay for me. It was a good investment because I realized that Ethereum, uh, which is the, the currency, the cryptocurrency, to buy NFTs is, is tanking right now, which gives you whenever the, the currency to, to buy NFTs, if that's tanking, that means the market's tanking. So I mean it's it's you know but they're they're selling it as if or promoting it as if there's still a gold rush in NFTs and there's not. So I don't really I don't really like what Boyd Walker did has done. I think he's a decent dude. I'm not gonna I mean I respect his intelligence. I respect what he's uh what he's done, but I just don't think he's 100% legitimate. I think he's really, uh, he's a businessman. He's in there to make money. I got a question for you, Mike. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I think I think what we're seeing, like you said in the beginning, is that they are being indoctrinated in these schools with these degrees, and then they're coming out, and they're giving off theory. They're not actually mm. practicing it in real life. So right. he can give you a bunch of theory because right. he got a PhD, but he's giving you all the theory but you don't see anything that's built structurally that people can go to and go learn and grow in, in groups. You know what I mean? There's right. nothing that's coming yeah. out of that. It's just like, I got all the theory and this is how you do this, this is how you do this, this you do that. If you go to Boyce Walker's YouTube page right now, you see video that he did about Kevin Samuels, bro. Like, what are you talking about Kevin Samuels for? <laughs> yeah, right. right. Like, dude, right. Like, it's ridiculous, bro. You're supposed to be doing finance and helping the community and at this downtime that it is right now, you should be saying, hey, open this business, open that business, open that business. This is the time to open this business. 
Right. But he's not saying that. He's doing something totally opposite of that. He's putting out gossip talk as a as a PhD. You know, and then he was then he was at the same time, Mike, he was trying to shame brothers into marrying women with kids just because he did it. Like, hey, I, I have a I have a real problem with brothers that try to play penis police. Like, hey, mm-hmm. bro, whatever you do with with the woman you do it with, that's what you do. But I have a real serious problem with brothers trying to play FBI penis police. Like they just hey, they work for the bureau. They police every black man who he sleep with and who who he don't sleep with. Hey, bro, I don't got time to do all of that. I got to focus on my life, my wife, my kids. Give me the practical information that works for family building, and then we can build a family right. Then we can build a community. To me, it just seems like he going all the way left, and he went left a long time ago, and he just steering the people to the left. That's what he's doing. Right. Yeah, he's collecting. He's collecting paycheck now. Because yeah, I don't. I don't. I haven't taken any of his other classes. Took that one NFT, NFT class, but it doesn't look like he's giving a lot of practical information. I don't think he is, but I mean that's you know, it's what it is. You know, you run game on you know you run game on folks like that for only so long before hopefully they start wising up and realize that you know you're not really you're not really on anything. I, I, I think he's a I think he's a decent dude in a way, but he's still at the end of the day he's still about making that dollar and I don't think he's really let me ask you this guy. question since you think he's a decent guy here let me ask you this mike would you give him any more money no i would not <laughs> all right dude. he ain't a decent guy mike <laughs> <laughs> hey hey look okay. hey look mike i know you, i know you're trying to be modest and nice but let me say this though real quick mike i noticed he was with jay morrison at one time jay morrison is caught up in pride he was with dame dash at one time dame dash just left him alone I done seen this over the last five to ten years. Boyce mm-hmm. Watkins has been moving around with a bunch of different people, and then everything falls apart. He was even with Umar at one time. Wow. Like, right. like dude, I, I done seen hey, it. Are you, are you out of Kansas City, man? Yeah, I'm in KC. You're in Kansas City? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm not too there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm in KC, man. You are? Okay. Huh. Yeah, I saw KP out of KC. I'm not too far from there. Yeah, yeah that book okay. cover, that that cover, that's my icon. I think I told you to get that book. I don't know if you ever got it. It's called The Man Knot. Did you ever get that book, Mike? Yes, I do have. It. I got it right. Oh, here. okay. Mm. Yeah, Dr. Okay. Tommy Curry wrote that yeah. book. Yeah. 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 It's a very good book, Fred. Uh, it's a, it's yeah. a very good book. It's a very deep book, and since Mike's mm-hmm. a PhD, I know he can get through it pretty good. But right. it's very interesting. It's about the misandric point of view of America towards black males. That's what it's about. The what? The what? The misandric point of view towards oh, black males in America. That's what Dr. Tommy Curry wrote about. Mm. He moved. He moved from the U.S. because of the way that the U.S. Really? used. Yeah, he's he's been gone out of the U.S. He's in like Europe somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah. I can see a lot of people leaving. Yeah. So I, I, you know, here's the thing with me, man. I just think that um, I don't want to like. I, I spent a lot of time in the military, so I, I got to admit that, uh, I, man, it's hard for me not to believe in the ideals, even how bad things are. It's hard for me not to believe in the ideals of this country. You know, my my dad was in the military too, so he raised me. He raised me, you know under that same kind of discipline, that same kind of regime. And so I, when I went into the military after duty, I, I fit right in. Mm. I mean, it was like, okay, I just went from one, you know, boot camp to the next. <laughs> really, that's, that's, that's really what it was. I, mean, mm. I, fit, I fit right in. And so um, I just I have a lot of appreciation for what, now nah, there was a lot, there was racism in the military too, mm. no question, but right. nothing like nothing like was out here man when i became a civilian in 2011 bro my mind just got completely opened up i i couldn't believe how racist uh american society is um because i went in the military as, as a 17 year old i didn't know anything about mm. i didn't know anything about how racist society was i just came from my parents the military and you know, been there for 25 years but when i finally got out and I got a chance to look at, you know, corporate America 
uh, the things that are going on in society. It's just, it's saddening, man. It's hard for me not to. I want to, I want America to be better, but I know it's going to take us as a people to be better first. We're going to have to call the, the folks who are making the decisions, like Biden, for instance. Where's our, where's our, uh, anti hate legislation? Where's our legislation like he gave the AIDS in, in a week? That's the, that's the George he Ford bill they stalling out, Mike. <laughs> what was that? That's the George Floyd bill that they stalling out. They gonna say they gotta get reelected to uh, make sure they make that happen. No, I'm, I'm talking about they they had it so that if you go up and that hate crime bill that they had with the Asians, if you go up and say something wrong, that's a federal offense. If you go up and threaten them, mm. that's, a, that's a federal offense. I'm t- oh, I get your point group. now, Mike. I right? get your point. Go ahead. They're a protected group. I'm saying that we need that same legislation. We need that same. We need that protected group legislation, where if you come up and threaten us, the, the way that we get laid down out here, why these white supremacists, man? If you come up and threaten us, that means it'd be a hate crime mm. of some sort. You know, if they come and you you threaten and you threaten our lives, or you attack our property, attack our home, that needs to be a federal crime. Period. You know, and so that's that's that same legislation that the Asians got. I'm not saying that they didn't deserve it or they shouldn't have gotten it, but we just heard the same thing. If we if we built the country hmm. and never got paid for it, right? It created trillions of dollars of generational wealth and it's still being reaped from our from our labor today, centuries later, right, or hundred fifty days, hundred fifty years later. I mean, come on. We we deserve that same legislation. Give us that same, and we fought in every every war this country has ever had. So I mean, you know, give us that same legislation, and then you know, put us back on equal footing with everyone else. Just like everyone else got a reparations check. I don't. You know, here's the thing for me. I want a reparations check for my people. Do I don't really need a reparations check. But if you owe it to my family, then give it to me. But the bottom line is, I'm saying that I just want to see my people come up, you know, where we have an equal footing, economic footing, where we don't have to be locked in the ghettos mm. and disenfranchised from the American right. dream. Or, you know, I want that, you know. So everyone deserves an opportunity, man, a fair opportunity. And I know Fred talked about, hey, we don't, want, we don't expect them to treat us fair. I agree with that. we got to be twice as good really three, four times as good. But the bottom line is, is that that's not the right way to do it. If we're going to do things the right way, then you make things fair for everybody. Um, so. I'm with you. I want y'all to see this, man. This is, man, talk about niggas, man. Talk about niggas. I mean, miles away, if not. Look at this shit. Like, this shit just bothers me. Right, Freddie Gibbs gets jumped in a brawl in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> Where the game? Is that the one they that? saying that? Is that the I one they saying right that now? Benny the Butcher did it or something like that or something? Yeah, like that but, yeah, you know? yeah. But they're miles away from the Epic Center or streets away. I don't know how far they are, but Buffalo is not a big city. I've been to Buffalo, and uh, like, like the fact, the nerve of these people. This was posted two hours ago, so it probably happened today. The nerve of these people, uh, the nerve of these people in the Epic Center to say, you know what? Let's go beat up another black man today, even though some, even though 10 of, them, 10 of our brothers and sisters got gunned down. Like, the thought is to go beat up another black man. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Like, 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 this is, ah. Uh, that's prophecy, man. That's Deuteronomy. That's Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight. Jesus Christ! Like, yes, sir, it is, Mike. Yeah, they giving reparations to Ukraine. They gonna get a whole country. What? They are gonna get a whole country? <laughs> yeah, Ukraine didn't only get reparations. They also get free schooling from some HBCUs too. Mm, yeah, Hampton. Did you see that, dog? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then my little black ass. I'm just saying, me as an us. 
my daughter goes there she's paying her 15 20 thousand dollars a year get the fuck out of here like i oh gosh man wow. you know it's uh yeah. hey man that's you know just like you said fred uh Public school system has done a hell of a job. Mm-hmm. That's the reason. That's you yeah, know, I mean, yeah. all the systems that are in yeah. in place has done a hell of a job. Oh we right, are we're definitely a people who are unrecognizable at this point. Right, you see that right there. That's you know, look at this shit. Niggas are <laughs> niggas are made by uh, American history, mm-hmm. American institutions. Mm-hmm. American society and reality it makes no sense. That's a whole other group, of race of people. You know what I mean? I mean, from a yeah. mental standpoint, niggas, niggas, man. It's a, a lot of them cats. A lot of those, a lot of those guys. They're done. Mm-hmm. They're casualties of war. From a spiritual yep. and mental standpoint, mm-hmm. they are. And and you know the thing about it is, both of you guys. Mm-hmm. The thing about it is, is that. This is what you would have seen, and this is what you probably seen in school, Fred. You probably seen this in the service, Mike. I've seen this in ministry, where men would be called to do things for young boys, but the families of said young boys would pull the young boys away before you got finished developing those same young boys. Because if you finish developing those same young boys, they would not become the people that you see in the video. Right. That's what I've seen in my experiences, and I'm only almost 40 years old. Mm-hmm. That's what I've seen in my experiences. Those no. same families will come back to me, say, help me. Okay, we help, but then they want you to help in the manner they want you to help in. It doesn't work like that. No, nah, we don't want this. Man, man, listen, I'll give this an example. I purposely put the Earl Spence thing in there so I can get people in so we can talk about this actually subject, you know? I, I just looked at Blue Blood and I normally go live at the same time. I have 150 people here between both channels, right? Blue Blood got 1.3 thousand, one, whatever it is. I'm not talking bad about Blue because I think Blue does an exceptional job. But I'm making the point is that we would rather be entertained. Do you understand? We'd rather be entertained yeah, than yeah. talking about subject matters like this. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like I was no, like, because I, I it causes really accountability. Talk. Yeah, because I said I don't really want to talk about Earl today, but I'll give it three minutes. You know what I mean? So I, I can get people in there. People don't want to talk about this, man. Yeah, because it, it requires accountability. It really do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it requires a face their fear. Right. Right. You know, and mm-hmm. it requires a face their fears. I mean, and, mm-hmm. and here's one thing. You know, uh, I hate to sound so raw about it, but uh I was raised to believe that uh you know all the scared ones are dead. Mm. You know, you, you have to you have to you have to be a man of principle mm-hmm. and stand on what's right. Even if it costs you your life. You have to. Even if it costs you your life. You I have mean, to. you know even if it costs you your life, you, you gotta have to be a man of principle. But what's right is right. Mm-hmm. I'd rather die for what's right than die a coward. Yeah. And what's, what's That's what Pac said. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, mean, well, I mean, for me, it's more like, okay, there was a man, um, man. you know, we know that what's going on in society right now on both sides of the fence isn't right. But we're pointing, I mean, it's the writing's on the wall. Uh, what happened on Saturday, that's got to stop. We can't have our, our women and children in grocery stores. I agree. And have these, these monsters coming in and, and, and snatch their lives from. We can't have that. Oh, yeah. We can't have that. And yeah, you're anyone right. Anyone that's successful and thinks that it's time to talk about boxing mm-hmm. entertainment, right? When that sort of deal happens, I agree. Straight fools. I'm with you on it. I'm with you on it, man. And uh, I, I think it's important that we continue these conversations, man. You know, and uh, it's. It's awful that we're we're consistently talking about this and there's like no I, I don't really have trust in the judicial system for real, for real. But in terms of us, like not necessarily because I, I don't expect vigilante acts to happen, but where's the shift? 
the shift in I'm not giving these people my talents. I'm not giving these people my time. I'm not giving these people my resources. But but they or, keep giving the people. My vote. Say it again, please, bro. Or my vote. Or my vote. Yes, yes. We consistently rehash it. For example, today in boxing, Shakur Stevenson said, uh, uh, I just saw it on my Instagram. I just saw it real quick. He said, Bob Aaron won't allow me to fight for undisputed. You know what I said? Isn't is isn't Jay Prince your manager? Isn't Terrence Crawford your your big bro? Why the hell are you having this conversation in 2022? But that speaks to the point. We would rather be entertained. We would rather say, ah, oh, I'd rather be comfortable and just do it this way. And then when it doesn't happen our way, I'm gonna blame Bob Aaron. You can't. I, I, you can't blame Bob Arum in 2022 because he shows. No, he is who he is. We he played his hand. Is. He played his hand already. He ain't. He ain't new on the block. He ain't. You know, he is who he is. And and and, and I think it, it speaks to niggas in Buffalo fighting. You wake up. You woke up this morning and said, "I'm gonna whoop a nigga's ass in the same <laughs> city." where every media outlet is there matter of fact you had to drive around a square some square miles to get to where you need to be wow you understand what i'm saying like you had to drive around all that attention to get to where freddie gibbs was and it was like 20 of them come on man like it's 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 just astronaut it's really astronaut man and 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 I, and I was going to do a video today on it, but I was like, ah, man, I, I was so close to doing it, but I didn't. I pulled back. I was at the charging station, and I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I pulled back. So. Where did you get that video from, Brad? What did you it's on, the, it just came up on my feed. It's on Hollywood Unlocked on Instagram. It, it, they just posted three hours ago now. It was, and, uh, but, it's, yeah, we'd rather be entertained. We would definitely rather be entertained. That's why. Uh, uh, that's why Hollywood Unlocked is so popular. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? And uh, people would rather talk about boxing. Yeah, as far as, uh, as, far as the things that I'm saying, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that uh, that we need to have vigilante type situations. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not even saying that you know, you take up arms and go on the offense. I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, you need to, you do need to be prepared to protect your family, your right. home, and your community. That's right. No, you do. Absolutely. And that's just part of that's just part of being human. Absolutely you know, right. Listen. Absolutely right. You know, Thanks. The Absolutely. Second thing I'm saying is that, uh, you know, for 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 people to take up that an offensive and 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 do something like that. It is almost suicide in a sense that mm -hmm. you don't have the resources to fight that right. fight that war. Right. And and this is this is much that any it is anyone else because of the blood, sweat, and tears and suffering that we put into the formation and standing up. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's set. So when right. it's all said and done, we don't have to fight for a place in this country. Our blood is in this soil. Right. We all have a place in this country. The thing is. We need to stand up and demand that rightful place. Mm -hmm. Standing on those, on that, on that truth is right. enough. Right. We don't have to. We don't be violent, uh, except in the in the sense of self defense. Right. Uh, in self defense, but we don't have to get offensively violent. We can just stand on that truth, and we stand on that consistently, and not have these instances where we're constantly looking to be entertained and constantly mm -hmm. fighting each other and acting a damn fool. You know, like you just show with these clowns. Uh, but you know, it's man, <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> we under a spell or something, man. I mean, mm -hmm. just how could you, how could you see something like that yesterday, and today you fight and you you have it in the same city, out. in the same city, dog. Like, like, take. Can you take a break? <laughs> God damn. Uh, I don't know how big Buffalo is. I I, I just went to the bus depot. And I drove to Toronto. You know, I went off Niagara Falls. So, but uh, it, it didn't seem big to me. You know, you know, it didn't seem like a ginormous city. But it, it's it, it's just an atrocity, man. That, and and it's just an atrocity to me that in the same. I I, I I'm being repetitive, but you get my point. Yeah. And I think I think a lot of what Mike is basically saying is, uh, 
is for the protection of the women and children. But the protection of the women and children typically, Mike, is going to come from men that are married into those families. Mm. So that's kind of a glaring problem that we have in our community where so many of our people are just so um, eager to not have a level of commitment to the person that they are having children with. Right. And by people continuing to do that, I can't ask Fred to protect my family. Fred got to protect his family. Well, I got to protect my family. And then my wife is going to also say, you can't protect a random woman that's not under your leadership. Okay, let's think about that in military terms because you you were in the military, Mike. If you're in the military as the leader, you protect your your unit. But, but But that's only because they follow you and they trust you. The problem that we're continuing to have is people are not willing to follow the leaders and they're willing to do whatever the hell they want to do. And then they look at the leader and say, hey, come protect me. It doesn't work like that. Right. That's yeah, what I continue right. to see. That's, That's what I continue to see. I agree. That's 100% on, on, on point. I, I actually posted something on my uh, Facebook page today. And I said, I, said, I said, ladies, if you didn't know, now you know. Hmm. You, you, you need your natural protection. You need your natural protector. All the women that are saying, I don't need no man. You know, when the, when the government check showed up, you had to kick the man out. So you and raise them kids without a father in the house. So they grow up undisciplined mm. and they end up right. Like, like Fred just showed what these, these dudes are out here fighting each other with no sense of self or, or self dignity. What they represent as, as, as black men or as men on this planet. That comes from no father. I couldn't have said it better. Yep. That comes from, from no guidance, no father in the house. And that came from that check coming from the government telling them black women, you don't need a black man anymore. I'm your man now. And had to kick them out. Well, the bottom line is, what they didn't realize they're getting set up for the okie doke. Yeah. Because now these young race soldiers that are being bred and born are attacking the women and children. They've already been doing it. Because you look at you look online, there's 65, 70 thousand black women missing right now. They don't know where they are. Mm-hmm. I mean, so they've been already human trafficking these black women, and 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 nothing's been. I had a there's a black woman, just I would say 10 miles from my home, that came up missing about nine months ago. They haven't found her yet. Mm. She was in her pool. So mm-hmm. what I'm saying is there's, there's black women in these major cities, especially D.C., Atlanta, coming up missing, and they don't know where they're at. Tens of thousands of them missing. You, just, you can Google it. Okay? So it's already, an attack's already been done on the, on the, on the week in our, in our community. But now it's is different. This is different now. This guy went in picking soft targets where he knew, just like Dylan Roof did, went into a church where there's going to be no one on a bunch of old folks in there um, and uh, uh, partitioners, partitioners going in trying to serve God, do whatever they're doing religiously. Mm-hmm. He goes into a grocery store with a bunch of women and children and opens fire. Mm. Come on, man. I think, you know, you think about you think about that for a minute. It's like, okay, well, now, black woman, you understand you do need a man. <laughs> and you need a black man as your natural as your natural you need a man you need a man oh, as yeah. your natural protector <laughs> because you're living in, a, in an environment that if you don't have your natural protector you are a target mm. and these young guys if you notice Dylan Roof this guy yesterday they are picking soft targets they don't pick targets that will potentially be available or able to, to defend themselves. They don't go up in you know these gang mm-hmm. infested areas or these guys that, that carry illegal weapons. They don't go in those areas. They go where they know most of the people there are going to be unarmed and unable to protect themselves. And they leave that that gang in uh, that particular environment for you know the police. The militarized, mm-hmm. militarized police. That's who goes and deals with those individuals that have potentially had the ability to protect themselves. But for the, the these vigilantes, these young race soldiers that are being raised to go out and commit these heinous acts, these guys 
uh, are hitting nothing but soft targets. Innocent, unarmed women and children and elders. Sam and Hart, you want to chime in on this? What's up, brother? How you feel, yeah? All right, all right. What uh, what we uh, we'll be chopping it up on tonight, man. We're talking about Buffalo. buffalo. Oh, I'm talking about Buffalo. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, very well. Yeah, okay. you clear. I know I got some noise. I'm trying to get quiet. Uh, KP for KC, man. How you doing, brother? I'm good. Salute to you, bro. All right, all right. Salute to you, bro. Um, man, you know, uh, man, uh, that shit is heavy, man. I wanted to uh, piggyback a little bit off of what uh, the caller, um, Mike, what he was saying, how uh, these cowards, they always choose soft targets. You know, he uh, he came into the uh, neighborhood first to do intel to see huh. if he would get any pushback. Huh. You know, and there was a dude that they interviewed who sat here and talked to this dude for like an hour and a half. You know, and had the nerve to talk about it. he was he had on a genius T-shirt and I talked to him and he was a genius. And I'm sitting here going, you know, why were you not pressing this dude talking about what the hell are you doing in this community? You know, what are you up to? You know, instead of doing that, you know, he kumbaya with this cat. Um, uh, you know, there are the little, these little, uh, uh, these little groups, man, who used to do these, um, with second amendment marches in the community, in the black communities, you know, they tried that bullshit here in Texas and they got ran up out the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, is that, you know, they'll, they'll come in and do Intel first to see if they're going to get any pushback. So like I was saying, he knew that nothing was going to happen to him. You know, when he came in there, he choosing those soft targets. He knew that uh, nothing was going to happen. He was going to be able to do what he needs to do. Uh, Dylan Roof did the same thing. Hey, let me interject real quick, Chef, your heart. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, hey did y'all notice that if you read the story that it was a black guy that was a, a retired security guard that confronted him and he got killed in the yeah. in the deal with it? He got killed in the deal with him in the, in the uh, store? Yeah. Yeah, He. I guess it said it was 55 years old. I think it's, it says his name was Aaron Salter. Mm -hmm. He confronted the gunman, mm -hmm. and I guess he, I guess he fired some shots at him or something. I don't know. Yeah, he was a retired police yeah. officer. Yeah, the thing is that you know they they never they never uh, uh, try and uh, uh, go with any 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 young uh, oh, no. No. brothers. And sisters. They never do that. Why would they do that? <laughs> do you all remember? Remember the uh, the cat who. Uh, uh, he said he wanted to do what Dylan Roof didn't do, and he uh, just was uh, he shot. He was shooting up a um, what was it a uh, Waffle House, and he said he, he said he picked that because you know the targets were young. Well, in that situation, remember the brother that took his gun and whooped his ass? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. You remember when that happened? So you know this is this is why they they pick certain targets. Uh, KP, KC, I think you were talking about the manifesto that, that, that he had. Uh, you, I don't know if you're familiar with the, um, uh, the manifesto called the uh, Turner Diaries. This was written back in the uh, 80s. And uh, in, this, in this manifesto, it speaks of killing uh, black people, these, uh, these uh, so-called white supremacist groups. Uh, they had in this manifesto is speaks of killing black people, uh, speaks of killing people who are who uh, who show any type type of love for black people, killing them as well, calling them race traitors or whatever the case may be. Uh, but like you said, this kid was was uh, was bred. He was he was taught this. So that that manifesto that he had was probably a copycat of the uh, Turner Diaries. I don't know if you're familiar. If you're familiar that with sounds that, sounds about right. I heard it's written Turner Diaries, but I never read it. But I'm gonna go read. It. Yeah, it was written back in the '80s, man. It was so far fetched. You know, people were were laughing at it because of some of the things that they were saying that uh, this the diary was speaking of. But these things were actually happening, and mm. this is uh, they actually used this to uh, like these initiation type killings into these groups. 
You know, they have to do certain certain type of killings, you know, to be a part uh, of these groups. You know, um, it's, it's crazy, man. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking at the fact that, you know, this happened today. And why would they come back with uh, this attack on this brother in the in, the, uh, in Buffalo and I guess in the same community? Why would they show that? Why, why, why are they not? You know, you notice how none of the media outlets are referring to this as what it is. This is an anti-black hate crime. Why aren't they referring to it as that? You know, they were. Let's I'm talk sorry. about it. Let's, let's say it. It is. Yeah, it's, it's exactly what it is. But they're not referring to it as that. You know what I'm saying? I uh, 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 um, when when Asian people were being attacked, you know, you had executive orders that was put in place right away talking about uh uh anti uh anti asian hate crimes you know they were getting legislation to protect to, to for them to be protected but yet uh that's not the same language you know they're talking this uh people of color bullshit you know what i'm saying when it's when instead of calling it what it is and this it's, that is definitely a uh, uh anti black hate crime You know, but the same, but uh, you know, uh, a shooting happened out there in, in California. Yeah, same yeah, day, right? It was, so it was done by uh, a 66 year old Asian man, you know, mm-hmm. killing his own people, but yet they're not saying anything about uh, uh, Asian uh, uh, hate on hate crime. You know, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not saying that at all. You know, and this that's that's what it was, but they're not telling, they're not saying that. You know, my point is, is that you know, whenever um, we uh, uh, kill one another, you know, they they always want to say, oh, well, what about black on black crime? And that's and this is the thing. It's like they're showing that video of, of Freddie Gibbs. Like, look at look at them. So what 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 this kid did what? was OK, because look at look at look at them. They're animals. Oh, you know, what I'm saying? this exactly. is this is this this is uh, this this is the persona that, that that people will get from watching, you know, that that video. I think I think a major key to that champion heart is that black males have to see other black males as human. Many black men right. don't see other black men as human. Right. They see other black men as right. being disposable. Yeah. Many black men see other black men as being disposable. A threat. So <laughs> as as we're looking at the Freddie Gibbs incident, in their age group, it's almost telling you that okay, these rappers is thinking like this. So then you got the other rappers that was just arrested a couple weeks ago on the Rico. You, you see right. what I'm like, so like you got all right. this happening in a whirlwind at one time. At the end of the day, they don't look at us as humans. And then if we got brothers and sisters in the community that don't look at each other as humans, then you gotta call those brothers and sisters white supremacists, bro. That just is what well, it is. Well, Ma- Malcolm said Malcolm said it best. Who, who taught you how to hate yourself? Exactly. You know, uh-huh. if you if you de- if you have hate for one another, then you know. I, I was just talking to a uh, gr- uh, girlfriend of mine, and she was saying that her her uh, sister in law actually shot her. Uh, shot, I think her her brother, a brother in law. No, the aunt. I'm sorry. Her, her, her sister in law aunt shot the brother in law in the face in front of his child. And she was saying, you know, oh, we, we got to pray for one another. And I said, uh, no, 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 no. no. Hey, no. See, we've been doing that too much. I said, the fact of the matter is we don't love one another. For her to be able to do that to him in front of his child tells you that we don't love one another. You know, I said, we got to stop all that bullshit, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, KPKC, KPKC, uh, KPKC, you, you definitely, you definitely right, man. Um, uh, and, uh, that, that self-hate is, is real. Um, and it's a shame. Uh, the thing is that we have to realize that, you know, all of us aren't going to be able to go. Uh, there's a certain demographics that we just not going to be able to save. It just is what it is. You know, uh, and it's, and when you see the ratchetness of certain females and things they do in front of their children, you know, when you see the uh, 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 the type of shit that these young brothers do, that that, that situation with, um, uh, with Young Thug, I mean, this dude is supposed to be a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? Why 
you know, are you still doing this type of dumb, dumb shit? You know, the thing is, is that these cats tell on themselves, you know, with the social with social media, you know, uh, uh, in their own lyrics. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, are you guys that dumb to be telling on yourself and then trying to figure out how you got caught? <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Well, what kind of sense does that make? You know? Makes no sense. But, but I can remember when uh, uh, when he was him, he, he was asked a question. This was back when Mac Brown got shot and he was that he was that got got murdered. He was asked a question about, you know, about that event. And he was, you know, he he totally disregarded the question. Started talking about, you know, we we iced up and we get money and all this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, so what? You, so you she had to more, more or less you know, try and interpret his answer. So she was like, are you saying that, you know, that that artists shouldn't speak on social uh, uh, situations that happen in, in, in black communities? He was like, no, nah. you know, so now his ass is, is now being hemmed up. You know, I wonder if he feels the same way. Mm, no, good point. Good point. Shout out to Mr. Whitaker, man. We met Saturday, man. It's great. To, great to see you in here. And shout out to Miss Bird, man. Yeah, man. And, and I was going to say that as it pertains to black people fighting, they're they not going to understand it until it knocks on their door. Right. You know? Right. Right. You know what? That That's true. That's true. I, I uh, you know, um, uh, Emmett Till, the situation concerning Emmett Till, uh, his mother, uh, his family, they when all of that stuff was going on with civil rights struggle and all that thing, uh, they weren't involved. But when that shit happened to Emmett Till, she then realized, you know what I'm saying? She said it herself. She didn't realize that, you know, she felt that that, you know, wasn't, you know, although our people was fighting for all of us, she felt that that wasn't her fight. But then when it knocked on her door, she realized she had to get involved. Right. But it shouldn't have taken that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, it's 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 it's, it's a thing of, 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 of being on code. And there are many different aspects of being on code. You know, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, it's heavy, man. Point that KP was making about uh, these black folks who are attacking one another. I can't, I can't hear you, brother. Yeah, you kind of okay. low, Mike. Go ahead, speak yeah, up. Yeah, you, you low, Mike. I can't hear you at all. You can't hear Hello? me. I can't. We hear can him. hear you now. You speak up a little bit, Mike. Okay, sorry about that. You yeah, turn your phone up or something. Okay, how about now? Can you hear Way me? better. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Way better. Kyle, okay, what's up, yeah. brother? Salute. <laughs> All right. The point that KP was making earlier about, uh, you know, uh, black people that are attacking one another, how they are also white supremacists. I think that, uh, that's a legitimate obviously. Um, You know, when you... Uh, I think a lot of what we see when we actually do hurt, hurt each other uh, is that we see each other through the same eyes or the same lens as white. A lot of people see us. Um, we see each other in that same light. Uh, and uh, I think that's an aspect of Stockholm Syndrome, uh, where when you have a group of people who are being oppressed, you know. Uh, Hey, one of you guys got it playing in the background. Y'all got to cut the background off. Yeah, I just muted. One hey, Phantom, I, I just muted you off. so we can hear you because you, you're playing us in the background. Go ahead. Okay, I was saying with Stockholm Syndrome, an aspect of what we're seeing now is Stockholm Syndrome. When you have a group of people who are being oppressed by a jailer or someone that has in some type of concentration, concentration camp, camp or in an oppressive system, those people who are being oppressed begin to have an affinity for their oppressors. They are oppressor more than they have an affinity for those who are being oppressed, their, their comrades. So the people who are with them under that oppression system they have less an affinity towards them and they have more of affinity to their oppressor or to their jailer. They uh, actually begin to see one another through the eyes of the oppressor. So mm. the most effective the most effective white supremacist are other black people mm. uh, because we began to see each other through that same lens. That's that's the uh, that's how powerful psychologically 
and emotionally and spiritually an oppressive system can be that's extended over a long period of time over someone's life and you in that program it begins at the time that you're born you know we, we've all heard the stories about the doll studies where you have these little white girls that you ask them which doll that they want when they're given a black or white doll they pick the white doll right they ask which doll is is, is, is nice which doll is evil they'll pick the white doll as being nice pick the black doll as being evil you know that sort of thing that type of programming starts from the time that we're basically from cradle to grave and if you don't have the skills the deep programming education the knowledge of self and the knowledge of the system that we're in like for instance i was talking about when i go to the movies i don't go to movies to watch the special effects or hear the storyline i go to figure out what the system of white supremacy is planning next or what they have in full swing right now in order to continue to tip the scales towards that oppressive system uh to keep people of color specifically black people uh under you know outside of the american dream and in, opp- in an oppressive state so that's what i that's what i go to movies for uh, every time I turn on the television, I'm looking for angles. What are they really saying? What is the message behind uh, what I'm what I'm seeing? So, at the end of the day, man, I just think that uh, our people just the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mm. And that's what's going on with our people. We're under a spell right now. I can I can't I can't say anything other than that because if you see what happened over the weekend. And then with the video that Fred showed where these guys are basically riding um, the very next day, less than, less than 48 or, more, or less than 48 hours, they're riding in the same city, you know, or, uh, fighting one another. That's a spell, man. That's, 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 that's something that's supernatural. That's something that, and, and, and it's all around the fact that we're in a state of confusion. Mm. We're in a state of confusion. We don't know what's going on. We don't have the education. We cannot digest dissect the area in the environment that we're living in so it's, it's about each one teach one but a lot of a lot of folks don't want to know because they're too scared or they don't want the accountability like Fred was talking about when it's all said and done we have to look this thing in the mirror and realize that there is no truce and there is no surrender mm. we have to, you will have to either fight this thing or be a casualty of war All right, Kyle, you want to respond? No, I'm just listening, man. I'm just listening to him cook. Uh, Mr. Phantom, what's up? You want welcome to the show, man. I ain't got no sound. Well, I've been watching your me. channel for a while. I'm surprised that you are alive now. Oh. Six in the for me now. Oh, appreciate you coming in. Uh, what oh, you got uh, on this what topic? What do you think about the Errol Spence and Crawford fight? Do you guys think that fight's ever going to be made? I think so. I mean, it seems like it will never be made. It's been <laughs> years. Point, right? I mean, I've been watching boxing for years, and it's never been uh-huh. made. Like I, I was watching it for like five years, and I think it still hasn't been made. So I'm like, I why think, would it be made now? I think this year is going to happen. Uh, if Are you not, sure? I, 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 yeah. Okay, percentage wise, give me a percentage. Eighty twenty. That's not that's not enough. It has to be a hundred because that, that 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 fight needs that. Uh, you asked a question, man. He answered your question. <laughs> you wanted that to answer the way you wanted happen. to answer. That fight needs to happen. Like it's gonna happen. We yeah. want it to happen, brother, but we can't make it happen. He just answered your question. That's all he did. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey man, we don't want that fight to happen, man. It's <laughs> yeah, not, a good, it's not a good fight. It's not a speak good about fight. It you know, we want it to happen. Uh, you know, I I don't speak about it when it happens. You know, then I, I will, but I, I'm not even gonna say nothing about it, man, until it happens. Until I know the contract's been signed and they're gonna fight. Facts. I'm with you on that. That's cause what that's what boxing is, man. Boxing is like if you gave a hooker a hundred dollars and you told her you're supposed to she's supposed to come back with sixty dollars in change, if you trust her, that's on you. I wouldn't. Right, right. <laughs> That's, that's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, hey, that's well, how boxing is. So you out it? Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Phantom, can you hear me? Man, I can't hear you at all, Mike. You real low, brother. I can hear him. I can hear him. Let everybody <laughs> mute up when Mike starts. You're going to hear him, man. I can't. Hey, where, where are you from, Phantom? If you don't ask me, you don't mind me asking. I can't hear him. Where are you from, Phantom? What country are you from? 
uh, origin, ancestors, or where I am right now? Because I don't know what that means. What currently. does that mean? Oh, yeah, currently. Where do you reside? That's a better question. Netherlands. I'm in the Netherlands right now. Oh, welcome to the show. Netherlands. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know what, that, where were you born? Where were you born and raised? Born and raised? Yeah, where were you born? Yeah. In the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. What was that? In the, <laughs> in Netherlands. the Netherlands. Yeah. In the Netherlands. I think you guys seem that's like hard to believe or something. No, no, we just don't get a lot of calls from the Netherlands. That's all. I'm just wondering. I mean, you know, you you, you look like you're from Ethiopia. You, you, you do look Ethiopian, Ethiopian though. Yeah, the Netherlands was the last thing I was. I feel like East African, African, yeah, but I'm, I'm, my parents are Somali. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Hey, so what do you think about what happened in, uh, yeah, in Buffalo, New York? Let's get your perspective. Uh, I don't know. I'm not from there. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, that makes. Sense. You don't have an opinion. You don't have an opinion on your brothers and sisters. I don't know. Uh, what I don't know the gun culture there. I'm not really from the area, so I can't give you a perspective because I'm not really from the area. So it's kind of hard to give you guys a perspective because you guys have a different culture over there. So right. it's kind of hard because you guys have guns, mm. and I'm not used to that stuff. No guns? Yeah, I've, I've never had a gun before. Wow. Mm. I've never held one before either. Wow. Yeah, man, gun laws are different. I mean, the safety is different in other countries, man. It, it, you guys have access to guns readily, so it's kind of crazy, but yeah. There's literally no threat of gun. Like, I went to Australia. Police don't carry guns. The police carry guns here, yeah, for sure. No, I'm talking about in Australia. I didn't... No guns. I'm trying to think everywhere so that so I what went. Are you, what are you guys going to do about the Buffalo shooting over there? Since you guys live there. We don't live we don't none of us live in new york but new york's gun laws is pretty pretty weird yeah. it's crazy how it's it's a it's lot of states in in, york, right? in, yeah they can but phantom a lot of states in the, in the u.s that you can't carry guns in have the most high crime <laughs> it's kind of crazy oh that's crazy yeah there's no threat they have no threats but i mean so I mean, new york is new york is like that and chicago is like that if I really, really wanted a gun, I could get one. Like super, super wanted. One. I guess uh, you can always get one if you really want it, but right. I'm not really about that life. So <laughs> I respect that because because some other men will lie. I'm about that life. I kill three niggas a year. <laughs> <laughs> There's really nothing to uh, be happy about killing. No, ain't nothing cool about it, man. Ain't nothing cool about that shit, man. That's why one of the reasons why I got this platform to make normal cool, man. Shit, everybody want to. What do you think, Fred? Wanted... What's your opinion on this? On, on I, I think he's the devil. I think that man. I, that I think he's this... wrong too. I mean, obviously that's that's a yeah. Mm -hmm. but what, he's what the devil, think? and what do you think should happen. To I, well, obviously he's gonna go to jail for life. But I, 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 I above that, we got to revisit these gun laws. One, no, and. And two, but they're never gonna do that. Like, there's been so many shootings in America. You guys still haven't changed anything. So yeah, I, agree. I find that kind of that's not gonna happen. I, I don't think that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Yeah, from an outside perspective. Yeah. The yeah. only time, the only time they revisited the gun laws was uh, when uh, Huey P. Newton found the loophole. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, what he? <laughs> yeah, in the city. Yeah. In already. Yeah. In California, yeah. Black Panther's arm and it was walking up, walking in the government building. That's the only time they revisited the gun line. <laughs> Isn't no, it no. just like Republican versus Democrat? The Republicans don't want the guns think, to be violent. Uh, the Democrats Manson, one thing I, I want to tell you, as you know, I don't know how long you've been in the United States and not how long you've been here, but one thing I want to tell you, man, is that um, a lot of what you see going on in the media now. Anyone about 45 and over, we didn't grow up like this. We didn't have, we didn't have, uh, like all these, uh, like, uh, we have a, a whole bunch of gangs, you know, people just killing one another and all that. That's not how black people grew up. I mean, did we grow up in, uh, affluent communities, anything like that? Most, most black people grew up in communities that, that were in need, that didn't have, uh, 
they weren't affluent. They were impoverished communities. A lot of us, some of us were middle class. But the bottom line is we didn't have all this, this, this all this hate and all this, this uh, discord between black people. We didn't have that growing up. When I grew up, I'm 53 years old. And when I grew up, the worst thing Man. you had to worry about when I grew up is you had to worry about, you know, you got into a fist fight, another guy jumping in, and then you got to catch him on the rebound. Right, but that was about it. You didn't have to worry about getting shot. We didn't have crack in our neighborhood. Uh, when I joined the military back in 1986, uh, I was 17 years old. And when I left the hood, man, we didn't have all the crack uh, infestation, you know, people just doing all types of immoral things, killing each other in the streets and all that. We didn't have that. This is, this is something new in the last two last two generations that we've, that we've experienced in this country. So... Um, what we see in Buffalo, uh, I'm talking about the black people who did what they did today, or it may have been yesterday. Sure. Occurred. The bottom line is that is a function of a public school system uh, and an environment where uh, there's immense amount of immorality, uh, poverty, drugs, and this is all comes. This all comes from what's being promoted in the mass media through Hollywood. You guys are over in these different countries. You see us through some of these uh, Empire shows. Uh, what's the one out of Chicago? The Wire. Yeah, so uh, Chicago, right? No. These, yeah, what is it called? Oh, The Wire is a very good show. Yeah, the, the Shy. The Shy. The Shy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that one that. Uh, uh, um, what's that? What's that rap? Wait, wait a minute, Mike. So you telling Power. me that. that uh, are you saying that. Uh, 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 Reagan with the I- Iran Contra wars, they didn't pump drugs in the in the community. You don't remember that? Oh no question. No, he yeah, said he, he didn't grow up with it. Oh, he just he's saying he didn't grow up with it. By the time yeah, that that, happened, the Reagan area was in the eighties. That's how well, the that that got Yeah, well, he's I mean he's fifty three. We almost grew up to around the same time. I'm fifty seven. What was that? Uh, no, I was I was replying to K, KP uh, KP Casey. Go go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I was just saying that uh, by the time that I, you know, by the time that that hit the, the, the neighborhood, I was already gone. I was already in the military. So I would come back. I would come back home on like leave or something, vacation, and I would see uh, crack houses and the shooting and all that kind of stuff that that occurs. But this is something that's happened in the last two generations. We've been here. We've been here for over 400 years, right? So right. before that, when we went into these neighborhoods, we didn't we didn't grow up like this. This is something that's very new, and our our these new generations growing up with no father in the house and having this this uh, culture of destruction propagated through the media. The Wire. Uh, what's that? Uh, what's that? Fifty Cent guy. Power. Uh, power. Tell my BMF, you know. Yep. Yeah, all these, all these different things. It shows the world that we have a, a, uh, a culture. degenerate culture. Degenerate that's culture. culture. Um, you know what? That's worth. I mean, uh, that's worth destroying. And that's where, that's where the, uh, the, 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 the philosophy or the paradigm of annihilation. It, it, it switched from it switched from oppression to annihilation because now we're being projected to the world as having a degenerate culture, as being a de- degenerate group of people whose culture is the refuse, the trash of the planet. That's a very dangerous position to be in. <laughs> Fred's glitching because, out. Man. I mean, that, <laughs> at this point, the only thing left to do is to annihilate it. Right. Get rid of it. Get rid of them, Nick. Man, listen. I remember I did a show. On when when NBA Young Boy was getting with Floyd Mayweather's daughter, and, and I said NBA Young Boy is a is a byproduct on both sides of the fence. Men not raising their kids, and 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 little boys growing up without fathers. Yeah, the fact that uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather's daughter <laughs> said, "I don't mind being the seventh baby mama," mm-hmm. I saw that as satisfactory. I'm like money don't cre- money don't money don't guarantee class, man. 
and 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 the absence of fatherhood the absence of accountability is literally what you get and i'm using her as an example because it's something that we all can have an opinion on i can use my cousin but y'all be like yeah i don't know my cousin so um it's it's but it, it, it's just incredibly important that these shows because i talked about this people disagreed with me when i talked about this a few months ago it is the highest B, not B, is it bmf is the highest rated show between 18 to 49 they call it they call us african americans 18 to 49 it is the highest rated show amongst african americans right bmf mm -hmm. and i said that's a problem that's yep. that's a problem and then we go out there and we beat up freddie gibbs two miles from the epic center where 10 black people were mowed down by a white supremacist I, what do you think if he uses the insanity plea? He might plead insanity. Say, look how degenerate of a culture. Look how degenerate of a culture these people have. Right. They deserve to be annihilated. That, right. That's the. That's what's being pushed right now. Mm -hmm. That is. That's what's being pushed. Right. I don't think you can plead insanity with a 180 page. Uh, it doesn't matter what Manifesto. he pleads. Manifesto. I yeah. mean, he, he's either going to get the death penalty or life. Like I, I don't know. And, and insanity guarantees him, you know, uh, a plea deal may guarantee him life in prison without the chance of parole, you know, but he's he's never getting out. Yeah, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say uh, this. He wasn't insane because he looked at the, the the white guy that was in the uh, store <laughs> yeah. and apologized. Facts, facts, facts. Uh, Did you see facts. his gun? And then, he, had, uh, he had the yeah. N-word yeah. on there. Yeah. 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 yeah, shit didn't yeah. Yeah. Woman, she uh, uh, Painted on his corner. He stood over the top of her and blew her brains out. I don't want to see that. I think dog. you guys I... need a hate crime bill or something like that. Oh, oh, they, oh, oh, we do. <laughs> Man, Mike, yeah, that's Mike's specialty. <laughs> I think that's what you guys need, Fred. Yeah, we, yeah. we got them. Yeah, you definitely right. <laughs> <laughs> we got him man we had this hate crime for asians man they had this hate crime i mean i'm all for it like i'm all for it. someone hates you the crime should be double if a teacher molests a student crime should be double time should be double if a police officer commits a crime against a civilian they should but that's never gonna happen that's double. unrealistic like the police officer thing because they're never gonna hold them accountable like that because mm, you yeah. know i don't know because we don't i i firmly believe uh one of the reasons why lincoln is successful in school is because i pick him up every day you get what i'm saying like, like there's accountability on lincoln yeah, he, sees that, he knows that he's going to see father you. is coming to pick his ass up right there's accountability in that every day lincoln gonna see me through that gate at 2 30 and be mm -hmm. like oh, i i gotta do good in school you you understand and and yeah. and i firmly believe that with people that watch us on tv Ah, uh, them niggas just jump. They just dance. Them, the them. I, I'm gonna tell you what they thought. Them dumb black bitches twerked because Joe Biden got in office. That's what I they mean, thought. That's like, what. Those, that's what these white things. people thought. <laughs> yeah. Yo, see, it just it just goes to show you that uh, our culture Forgive fights for to not have I mean, standards. Just as that, you like, know that, Fred. Say it again, please. Our culture fights to not have any standards, and when you try I to have a dog. standard, we got to do a show. Everybody on says we got to do a show. Everybody on says yes. Why you why you want to have this a standard? Like you just said about class, right? Uh -huh. There's no way that a 500 million or half a billion dollar athlete daughter should be associated with somebody that's not going to law school, doctor, something like that. That don't even make sense. Right now, I understand this. I don't have 500 million dollars, but there's a separation between what he has access to and what we have access to night and day so there's there should be a certain level of elite african-american people that get together it just is what it is bro we got to stop with this uh mindset that oh we're all equal and everybody's the same no a special athlete made it to be a special athlete lebron should be able to marry who he wants and when he married that person that's who he married to and then he's probably expecting his kids to marry somebody in that same kind of circle it just is what it is black people have to get out of this thought process and no standards mean that we could just do whatever we want and it's not going to affect the community as a whole that don't work it never has worked and it never will I don't think it matters. yeah 
that well. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe the way, and I'm not speaking on uh, Floyd situations. I don't know the man or anything. I'm looking from a thousand. Man, I'm, Mike, I can't hear you, but I'm struggling to hear you. He had so many women. He had so many he women. Doing the head from the head head. It's okay for a man to have that many women. It might be you, Chippin' Hart, because I can hear the man clear. You can hear him? It might be me then. Damn. Yeah, cut your volume yeah, up, Chip. We can hear it. He keeps yeah. coming in. Yeah. A volume. I was saying that maybe, maybe uh, Floyd's daughter thinks it's okay for her to be one of many women because her dad uh, has so many women. I thought that. You know, maybe that, maybe that's it. You know, mm-hmm. but uh, I will say that that whole tradition of having a lot of women that you're not committed to, or having a lot of men that you're not committed to. That's straight out of slavery. That's straight yes, out sir. Of slavery. Yes, sir. That's a slave tradition. Mm. Right? Uh, you know, so that, that's exactly what that is. Mm. That's where that comes from. And Fred, what you what you mentioned about your son, man, being accountable because you pick him up every day. Mm-hmm. I think the, the other side of that, his, his mom was a doctor, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he get, he catches him from both sides. Mm-hmm. He don't have a choice but to be great. Mm. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. you don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and his mom is his hero. His mom is his hero. You know, I, I, I feed that to him. Like, I don't let no celebrity, no basketball player. I say, your mom saves kids' lives every night. I tell him that all the time. He'll come. If he was woke right now, I would call him like, who's your hero? He, he obviously going to say me because I'm talking to him. I'm going to say, who's your other hero? He's going to say mom and say, why? She saves lives every night. Every night she's in there saving lives, man. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. that's why it's so important that we teach our young and we teach our young people like uh, the brother was saying um, uh, uh, Mayweather should have taught his daughter that, you know, picking your mate is important. Super important. It's important, man. You you got to have someone that's like minded. You know, um, my dad used to always say you never hook up a, a, a horse and a mule pull the same court mm. pull the same cart. Mm. You, gotta, you gotta have two mules or two horses mm. but a horse but a horse and a mule will not pull the same court the mm. same cart and that's you know you know how old black folks said you know we have some ways of saying it but you know the the little analogies the things we use but i mean there's a lot of wisdom in that and he was talking about hey when you pick your woman make sure you pick a woman of the same pedigree as you right don't yeah and, and, and don't and imagine this, the panel. Check this out. Imagine being worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and your and your daughter created a seed that's still twenty feet, that's still in the same position as every black person in America. She wow. she basically gave up her competitive advantages. She didn't marry a doctor. She didn't marry an executive. She didn't marry. She didn't marry a man who who drives trucks. She didn't marry an electrician. She married a man. Oh, she didn't. She procreated with a kid that's going to be fighting cases for the next twenty years. Wow, understand that. To your point, you know, um, you have to keep in mind that just because uh, uh, Floyd's uh, uh, tax bracket is what it is, doesn't mean that uh, the parenting skills are. What they should do, you know. Uh, everybody is uh, uh, it's not a parent. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have plenty. You have mothers and fathers, but you know, being a parent is is, is different, right. you know. Uh, and uh, uh, you know what you're what you're saying about picking the, the kids up every day. That that's that's very important. I did that with my girls, uh-huh. you know, and that's setting that foundation. You know what I'm saying to uh, uh, to make sure that you know. Now understand now. You know when you set the foundation as they get older, they're going to make their own decisions and things to coordinate. It may uh, they may stray, you know, a little bit from. But the thing is, placing that proper foundation, you know, they 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 definitely won't stray too far. You know that's my that's my point. But understand that as they get older, they're going to make their own decisions. There's going to there's going to be that point where you. You know, you're gonna have to basically, you know, uh, when you take the train wheels off, you know, and let them do, let them do their thing. Right. And uh, and in some, in a lot, a lot of cases, that's hard. You know, 
uh, for some people. Um, uh, but, you know, it's got to happen. Right. You know? uh, uh, some of the decisions that, you know, that my girls uh, have made, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, my, my, my youngest, I think she kind of bumped her head a lot. And I, I, I try and guide her in certain directions. But, you know, she, at the end of the day, she wants to do it her way, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I say, OK, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, but the foundation, you know, has been laid. So. Right. Uh, so I know that at the, at the end of the day, she's going to be all right. Yeah, the foundation is there. Hey, yeah. KP, what did you say? I'm I'm, I'm going to type it because I want to do a show on that. Black people fight to not have standards. Whew, that's so true, Wait, man. Again, black people fight to what? Not have standards. Not have standards. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, someone said this. I can't remember who it was, but he said that we are the only group that will uh, uh, that um, basically uh, glorify uh, killing one another. <laughs> you know, it said that there is no, you know, like things that these cats say in their records and, and, and their music. He said, there's no way that, you know, uh, that they would allow Garth Brooks, you know what I'm saying, to make a record, you know, about uh, about killing, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, some other white dude, you know, in his music. Uh, so we're the only we understand that the we don't control, you know, our music. Our music is controlled by, right. by another other individuals who actually, you know, help perpetrate that type of bullshit. We have to make a stand against that and stop co-signing it. You know what I'm saying? That's correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an important thing to bring out to point out. To point out is that it, although we're the ones that are talking about it and actually making that a reality, we're speaking that into existence. Through the music, mm -hmm. we don't control the music industry and the guys that are doing it. Why are they doing that? Mm. They're doing it for money. Right. They're, they're selling their souls for money. Right. It's all said and done. But it's all said and done. That's not how we were raised. Kevin Hart, I see the grand you here, brother. So I know, I know you know what I'm saying. Right. Well, that, now, you know, I don't know how old you are, but I'm assuming we may be supposed to be in the same age. But the bottom line is, anyone over 45 knows that we didn't, we didn't really grow up like that. That's not right. how. Grew up. Right. I mean, yeah, we grew up. We grew up with Fat Boys, <laughs> Run DMC, so funny. Uh, EPMD, you know, Eric Sermon, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, all the rappers we saw that we got into. Um, right. Those things, the new, you know, Houdini, you know, all the all the new, uh, all the old rappers, they wasn't rapping about killing each other. They weren't doing that kind of crap. This is something that's very, even, I guess it really came out of the West Coast, West Coast rap. With, with uh, you know, all the, the gang violence there with the drug, the drug uh, epidemic that happened in uh, uh, Los Angeles and then swept the rest of the country, and, you know, with, um, with Iran Contra uh, thing. And, but the bottom line is that that is something that's two two generations old. That's not something that we grew up with. And just like you said, Champion Art, we don't control that narrative. That narrative is being controlled by outside of our communities, but you know, unfortunately, right. we don't know about who we are as a people. That we just we just accept whatever they tell us we are. If they tell us we're a bunch of our women are there, a bunch of mm -hmm. hookers, and whores, and, mm. you know, and uh, they should be t twerking all over the freaking internet, then that's what they do, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. Or uh, if they tell our I tell our young men that they're just a bunch of gangsters and thugs. You know, and uh, all they need to be doing is thinking about killing another black person, and that's what they do because we're that weak mentally because we have no foundation, mm -hmm. we have no uh, actual knowledge of self, where we come from. We don't know that we're actually God. We're actually God's chosen people. We, we don't realize. That. No, we are, and 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 we got to be that. See, when we use the term king and queens and ancestor and brother. There's an expectation of character. There's an expectation of action that comes with those words, and mm -hmm. and, and and I think we lose sight of it, and, and and I think us as a whole, we gotta expect that expectation as it pertains to character and integrity. You know, we're we're so lenient. 
we so quick to turn the other cheek, man. And, 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 you know, that that's, I mean, sometimes it's to my fault, but I'm not a forgiving person. I'm a, I'm a, like, I leave you alone. Like you get what I'm saying? Like I'll leave you alone, but I'm not inviting you back to my house for Thanksgiving. I'm not buying you a Christmas gift. I'm not yeah. doing it. I, 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 I don't family, friends, blood, non-blood. Nah. Now I understand if, if you don't, if you do something that's not out of malice, like that, that's, that's understandable. If your spirit tells you they did it because it was by accident or th th that, that, that wasn't their true intentions, then I can, mm -hmm. then I can have a level of forgiveness, but I'm not inviting, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't let snakes linger, you know, and, right. and I, 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 I get it from both sides in my, in my real world, you know, uh, about like, man, why you don't talk to him no more? I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want him to lie to me and say, I'm sorry. Or she to lie to me and say, I'm sorry. You know, stay over there. You do what you do. Even people that, I got people that owe me thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. And I got important people in boxing that has betrayed me. And I've never called them. Never called them and, and or asked for my money back. Because I know what comes with it. It comes with lies. It comes with 30 conversations. Nah, I'm not doing it. You understand? I'm just yeah. despise the female. You consider that a down payment on peace, Fred. <laughs> Man, who you tell her? Who you tell her? Who you tell her, dog? Uh -huh. Yeah. And you know, sometimes and sometimes I've learned I've learned keep too. Money. Keep the money and now I'm, I'm at peace because I don't have to worry about you. Man. You yeah. That's where I'm at with it, Mike. Yeah. That's what I've learned over time. Yeah. Sometimes you pay some people to just go away and you don't go even away. know that you pay them to go away. Go away. You, you gave them something and they went away. They yeah. weren't gonna pay you back. Right. You didn't know they weren't gonna pay you back, but they just went right. away. Right, 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 right. And and I just let it be. You know, I just go on and live my life and don't reach out, don't call, and right, you know, and that's the maturity. Like I equate that to like when someone pisses you off and, 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 and you type that long message, then you delete it and just put Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. You know. Okay. Like when family tweet me, text me, I don't even read the text anymore. Like I, I don't read them. I just if if, cause if it's something really bad yeah, happens, um, I have one get... question for you. Yes, go ahead, bro. Yeah, go ahead. Well, obviously, you 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 carry yourself as pro black. Uh -huh. you care about the black community mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I know it's gonna sound harsh, but oh, why do why do why my kids mix? Why is Dre Asian? Yeah, that's but, that's my question. That's, so what that's I who asking. I fell in love with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, fair, fair okay. enough. I uh, fair enough. I uh, uh, that's a question that I probably get asked once a month, and I'm totally comfortable with it. Fair, fair, fair. I, enough. I I think the I I don't know if I uh just so people that are listening, I don't consider myself pro black. I use the term um, um, when I first got on the internet because that was the talking point, right? That was, and but when I got kids, like when I fell in love with being a father, I realized it's about integrity, you know? And, and I'm always going to side with people that are in your inner circle that are, that look like you. Um, and I, I'm just not a fan of that anymore. I'm I'm really really not a fan of that anymore because I look on the internet, and the people that are pro black, pro -black is a joke. Yeah, they side with white people. Like and 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 I'm like, but that's not true. That's not what you say, you know. And and so I just sit back and I just be the greatest human being that I can be. Now I grew into this person, Phantom. So when you go watch my old videos, you're gonna be like, damn, Fred is different. And and and, and that's what I'm telling you. It's okay to be. I learned this from Malcolm X. It's okay to make a left turn right now. Even when death is knocking at your door, it is okay to say I was wrong. Yeah. I was wrong. Simple as that. I was wrong. Yeah, because was, because every every time I see that mm -hmm. thought process of quote unquote being pro this or pro that, mm -hmm. right? As far as pro black goes, mm -hmm. it never goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. It never goes, it goes in a circle. I'm watching brothers say they pro black. Most of them that are saying they pro-black are not even married to a black woman. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to classify myself as pro-black and I'm oh, married yeah, to it's a black woman black kids. It's finest. So, so like it's a joke because 
So, because if you're going to play that kind of game, you got to have to play that all the way out. Right. right? So, Talk all your it. kids is going to have to marry black, all the, you know, and, and, and based on what we're seeing, most people move into areas where their tax brackets take them. And more likely than not, if you move out of an area, you're most likely going to co mingle with other people. Mm-hmm. By co mingling with those other people and sending your kids to school with those other people, that's going to change the dynamics of your family sooner or later. So stop playing the silly games. America got too many people coming in the country each and every month from different countries. And we all come from different smorgasbord people. Ain't no way that's going to work. Because even some of our ancestors was mixed blood. So it's a waste of time. Yeah. And, and from a science perspective, like for real, from a science perspective, the labels are put on us by the commercial economy. The closer you are to the equator, the darker you're going to be. The yeah, further away seems. from the equator, the lighter you're going to be. And if the cradle of civilization is in that region, then we're all black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so capitalism <laughs> created our devils. You know, like I'm just saying from a science perspective. You know, but but since we live in America, that is an that is a great question to ask me, and uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't shy away from it. I I, I think it's important because. How I started my channel, I'm not that anymore. I've matured. You know, I, I've literally, literally morphed in, into the man that walks with integrity. You know, uh, th- there was a time where Fred uh, uh, s- supported the bullshit. I'm not doing that no more. Not with two kids. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm really, really not. I'm, I'm, I don't support the bullshit. I don't, I don't promote it. And, and I have a, like I said, I have a paper bag theory. You're not gonna Bro, see me with the three. Not- video is the one with Adrian Brona when he threatened you backstage. <laughs> Who? Adrian Brona. Adrian Brona. Oh, that know. was a long time ago. And d- d- that was a funny ass. That was yeah, my that first was a- video I saw of you. That's oh yeah, because that went viral. Yeah, that went viral. And uh, yeah. but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's just important that we find our purpose. You know, you guys saw me in real time fall into my purpose and. Uh, uh that that's why i like the beauty of this you know the the same raw and open and honesty that i have with y'all the same raw and honesty that i have with my kids dre family my mom you know dre's family like it's 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 that important you know i don't you guys have seen me grow from an intellectual perspective on race you guys have seen me grow financially you guys have seen me grow with two kids you know, uh, Dre doesn't want to be on camera or else me and Dre would do videos all the time. I have no problem with it. She's anti-camera, you know, and uh, uh, she has no desire to ever be on camera. And uh, um, and it, it's it's just incredibly important that that if you take something away from me is that I'm not afraid to make my corrections butt naked in front of the world, you know. For, for lack of a better example, you know, and, and I've been that, you know, and um, it's uh, I I honor that about myself. Like I I respect that about myself that that I I can auto correct myself. I can self correct myself. You know, I don't need a pastor to tell me you need to pray thirteen times and give me thirteen thousand dollars. You know, I I don't I don't subscribe to that. You know, so, so now when I got. Now when I got two kids, I can't give you thirteen thousand dollars, Pastor. You know, so, 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 so that's it, man. And so, uh, and then the point, I've I, 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 I've written down a bunch of notes too, and I'm glad KB brought this up, and uh, KP brought it up too, and and I'm pretty sure you, you thought of this. Every pro-black agenda has set us back because if time goes forward, that means we go back or go forward, right? Black Lives Matter raised over $90 million. Where's the $90 million? Black Lives Matter voted for a man that is pro lock a nigga up. Well, they stole it. Yeah, they stole the the money. money. Yeah, they definitely stole the money. But our agendas is not attached to the people. Yeah, well, Black Lives Matter was really never about about black people if you read their mission statement i agree you know, they were talking that transgender bullshit they were never talking about 
family as far as man being head of the family, a black family. Uh, they actually had to change their mission statement because people oh, were they changed it, huh? And they were like, wait a minute, what the hell is this? But yo, uh, don't most charities steal the money anyways? Well, I'm not gonna say most. I'm gonna say yeah, they are, they are uh, charities. They are charities that steal money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know uh, Red Cross, there was some controversy concerning Red Cross a while ago. Yeah, I, I, I definitely would say that, man. It's, uh, it's there, just- there hasn't there hasn't been a political agenda that was suiting the needs of black male heterosexuals ever. Right. Ever. There's never been one, and, and that's the problem. Because if you give the money to the men, the men supply the money to the families. But if right. you give the money to single women, then you get whatever the hell you get. They consume everything. Oh, right. Right. It just is what it is, bro. Right. Yeah, I always called that organization that was con controlled opposition. You know, uh, um, what's his name? George Soros had his hand in it. You know, so I always considered that group as controlled opposition. I never considered that anything for for Black Americans to begin with. Mm. So real. Man, great conversation, y'all. Shit, hey, we got to come back at some point with this show. We're gonna be dry for the next two weeks of yeah. boxing anyway. But I'm gonna use these boxing topics to try and bring these suckers in here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are there any good fights next week? No, it's uh, go ahead. No, it's it's just David David Benavidez uh, okay. uh, versus. But uh, that's just like a he's gonna. Uh, it, it's uh, whatever. I don't know. A setup fight. Just yeah, a setup set fight. fight. Yeah, it's, a set up fight. it's a setup fight. Yeah. yeah. And so we go dry for another two weeks and then we come back with uh June fourth. We got two big fights. Stevie Fulton is fighting uh Daniel Roman, who's a very durable, he's like kind of like Sean Porter, you know, in that weight class. And then we have uh Devin Haney versus uh Oh yeah, oh, that's a good fight. That's yeah, that's gonna be. I'm 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 gonna do something at my crib for that one. I'll be moved What's in. What's the betting odds for that shit? Let me see. It's, it's pretty close. One ninety, something like that. It's gonna drop a little bit more if that fight was in America. He's the favorite. Yeah, he's the favorite. Oh, Devin's a favorite. I, I definitely have Devin winning that fight. Definitely he's a Devin. favorite, but he's going down under. So I don't know about that one, G. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. True that. True that. Minus two twenty. Oh, it's, it went up minus two twenty because it's more American money because it's in Vegas, but it'll drop. Mister Phantom, what you got? Last point, what you got, man? Quote your my, final my last point. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for your videos. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate you. Uh huh. Thank you, That's dog. It. I totally appreciate. It. Come back. Come back. Stay up. Come back. Come back. All right. Appreciate you, dog. All right, brothers. Absolutely. Do you guys think that Devin needs a knockout? He needs a knockdown. <laughs> uh, he gonna need something. Devin is not a dominating fighter. He's a he's a winning fighter. You know, he's not he's not dominant. You know, yeah, he fights he fights in a lot of spurts. He yeah, does a lot of spurts. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of spurt fight. He's not a. Um, I mean, I like Devin Haney, but he's not going to show you what Shakur Stevenson showed you. Right. Put it like right. that. Shakur Stevenson can dominate whole rounds and not lose whole rounds. Right. Devin Haney dominates moments. Right. So tell me this. Hell no. Hell no. You think that Devin can win without a without a knockout? I think I don't think so. I think he's gonna have he's gonna have some big moments because see, see a lot a lot of people is underrating Ken Bosos. Ken Bosos is a bad boy. I mean, this is this is the thing, guys. I mean, this is what I'm seeing. Cambosas and Tiafima Lopez was pretty close. I'm not saying Devin Haney is just gonna wipe the floor with Tiafima Lopez, right? I'm not. Mm -hmm. I've never thought that. I did. So I'm not. Okay, you can think it if you want, but when he get in that ring, he's about to show you. Yeah. When he go fight Cambosas, Cambosas is the best fighter he's ever fought. Uh huh. Let's just like it, Devin. It, it, Devin Haney is the best fighter he ever fought. Don't forget oh, that. You can you can say that, but Tia Fimo Lopez did beat Lomachenko live and in color. We Lomachenko watched. Lomachenko wasn't shit. Lomachenko wasn't you shit. Can, he still ain't Cal, Cal, 
Cal, you can say Kyle. that, but Man, you can you cannot... Steve Cunningham is his favorite fighter, but we go away. We go away. We go away, hey. Kyle. Get off. Hey, Cal. <laughs> Cal, you can say that if you want, but at the end of the day, we watch the guy fight. I watch the guy's fight. I, 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 I like Devin Haney. I want to see him win. I want to see him be great. But he ain't fought nobody at that level yet, guys. Why you hating? That's all I'm saying. Kyle over there hating. Why you hating, dog? Why you hating? Being rude. Why are you always hating? <laughs> okay, we're going we gonna to be here at the barbershop that Sunday. Oh, we're going to be here? Over. Yeah, we're going to yeah. be here. I want Devin to put on the clinic, man. I, I uh, We need him to win. to put on the clinic. Yeah, I man. want him to win. I'm just, I'm just. Y'all, I'm just, hey, y'all let a nigga get hit one time. Y'all just forget about how. No, 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 no. 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 It's, it's boxing. Ah. You're gonna get hit. I, I no. never said nothing. Yeah, I never said anything about him getting hit. You are gonna get hit? It's boxing. He dominated that no. whole fight against. Yeah, Earth. he dominated that whole fight. Against. He got caught, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. You are gonna get caught, but it, it didn't knock him to his feet. I give him credit for that, Jojo it Diaz. Right? Knock him down. Uh, you know, off his feet. I thought that Jojo yeah, Diaz fight was a big win. He beat Lenores. You know, oh, Lenores yeah. wasn't okay. Lenores is okay, but I, I thought JoJo was a. Was Chambosis a is thing. better than both of them. Dudes. Yeah, he is. He is, and and uh, like Mickey Boy, Bay fought him. Mickey Bay fought Chambosis, so he knows. Yeah. And, 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 see, and he, see the Mickey problem that Haney, the problem with Haney is this, bro. He doesn't have a consistent head trainer. His trainer changes all the time, bro. Like he's got Haney, different yeah. voices all the time. Mm. That's that's confusing over time. Either you're gonna have the same guy or you're not. Yep. And Ben Davis said that doesn't work, bro. And Mickey Bay are not in his corner this fight. They got fights. Ben Davison, I don't know if he has a fight, but uh Mickey Bay has a fight May 21st. So yeah, when is Mickey Bay and Nolan Farmer? Uh when is that? Oh, that's this week. We gotta promote it. Come on, we gotta promote that fight. Hey, yeah, we definitely John, got you got to reach out to me, man. Y'all got to do some interviews, man. Y'all got to hey, they gotta call fight, in. Man. We didn't know they was having a fight. Yeah, yeah. just hit me, man. We got to talk about that fight this week, man. Tevin Farmer and Mickey Bay, man. Make sure we go buy it. I'm buying that fight. It's $29.99, yeah. man. Yeah, we definitely yeah, we got to promote that fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, you check it out. Send me a flyer if, 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 if the yeah. John is their promoter or uh, Tevin or uh, Mickey. Send me a flyer fight week or something so I can promote it. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, I want to see what Devin does, man. I want to see him win, but he just got the odds against him where he went to to to, to make the fight and all type mm-hmm. of deal, da da da. Right. But he's gonna need more than a twelve round domination. He's gonna need because if Floyd Mayweather had a twelve round domination against Canelo Alvarez in Vegas right. and he got a majority draw, I don't know what more you think Devin Devin ain't gonna have to do more than that. Right. Well, you do know, you do know that they not the judges are not gonna be from Australia. You know that, right? Don't matter. I don't they give get, a they damn. They getting paid bro. in Australia. They getting paid in they Australia. Getting paid in Australian money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. He's going to need it pretty much almost. Yeah. Stopping. He's almost stopping. Right. Facts, man. If going to shock you, what do y'all think? I'm telling you. I, w- I want to be shocked then, Cal. Facts. Yeah. Facts. So. Yeah. Final call, what you got? Who who we got, KP? Final call, what you got? Salute, last man. The fun, uh, the, my last words is, man, that was funny, man. I, I couldn't believe the Phoenix Suns blew that game yesterday. But man, that's my last thing. What you got, hey, champ? Hey, but I, made, I made money on this game. Uh, oh, man. 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 See you tomorrow, bro. See you tomorrow. What you got, champ? Oh, man. What the champ tomorrow? Hey, Nine o'clock, eight thirty. Uh, as soon as Kyle get yeah. in the building, what's up? Hey, uh, did you talk about? Uh, you get a chance to talk about um, Kevin, um, Kevin Samuels? Yeah, we definitely can bring it back because I love what he stood for. Yeah, okay, we need to chop it up on that. Yeah, well, I'll bring it back. Yeah, we talked about it when he died that Sunday, but uh, 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 let's talk about Kevin Samuels and black people loving. We could talk about that tomorrow. Cool. Okay. Kevin Samuels and black people love not having standards. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's man. Yeah. We definitely talk about that. I couldn't yeah, believe sure. that. It's gonna yeah. be a boxing title, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try and right. bring them in tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. cool. Big switch. Okay. Yeah. Big right. switch. Yeah. We got uh, we got our we got our cooking with the champ episode tomorrow. Right? Yeah. But as soon as Kyle jump in the building, we go. We'll, cool. We'll, we'll, All right. We'll, All right. I'm out, man. Right, Mr. Fuller, what you got, big homie? Appreciate you, man. Two hours hanging out on the phone. 
Appreciate you. What you got, big I homie? Know, I normally don't do this. Man. I know. I we appreciate you. But I, I, I just, you know, um, I'm, I'm 53, but I'm young at heart, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but, uh, so, uh, but anyway, I, I appreciate everyone. Nice uh, love. You know, let me talk a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let me talk a little bit because I will say that um, a lot of stuff is going on, man. It's weighing on. It's weighing on all mm-hmm. of us. And it's right. definitely weighing on my, I just, man, I, I, you know, I just don't see individual success as really being um, that important when you have the vast majority of your people kind of like going down the tubes right. or a significant portion of your people going down the tubes. Right. I just don't, you know, that's a problem that needs to be, we can't have what we saw on Saturday. That's, that's got to stop. Man. Mm-hmm. We can't have our mothers and grandmothers. Amen. And wives daughters shopping and getting murdered right you know in cope and can't stand for that i'm with and, you uh, it's, it's, it's time to stand up and um each one teach one and start taking individual and collective stances against uh against that against the system i'm with you yeah, got it. we got it we can't we can't we can't we can't settle for that so that's it now nah, we appreciate you coming in thanks for hanging out with us Yep. Peace. What you got? What you got? What you got, man? You didn't talk too much tonight. That might be a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the blessing was, man, last night, man, I was uh, working the door uh, at the club. You know, the guy from, uh, you know, uh, the dude that played uh, Corey Wise and When uh-huh. They See Us? Who? Corey Wise. Remember how uh when they see us, you never seen that movie? No, I never seen it. Central Park Five? Uh-uh, I didn't see it. I purposely didn't see it, but go ahead. Oh, word? No, I didn't want to see it. I I saw the interviews on on OWN and I said, I'm not watching it. But go ahead, tell us about it. I I, I wouldn't my, my spirit didn't want to watch it, but go ahead. Well, one of the main characters uh came to the club and I helped him get in. Oh, he couldn't get in? But you can't get in. You in the club, but you can't get in. Is that what you th- That line was crazy last night. Uh, well, I'm glad. It was some nigga shit, man. So much nigga shit took place last night. Right, I bet. So my first night, it was it was mild niggas. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. You know, there's a few niggas sprinkled. More black people. But last night, was it was a nigga night, what I called it. <laughs> Straight well, niggas. Well, that's why they hired you. They want niggas fighting niggas. Niggas from their, pers- from their perspective, you know. Sure. No, because every all the other nights is cool. Sundays is the nigga day. That's what I'm saying. Oh, well, you work every other. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Anyways, man, we getting out of here. You ready to get out of here, man? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, keep your foot on these suckers next, friend. Hey, next week I gotta do your show, man. Talk about the movie, man. For sure, for sure. So we can so we can get the numbers up. You know what I mean? I can cuss some people out. Yeah. I'll be in the mood to cuss people out next week too. Oh, you know, let's go. Out. Yeah, I'll be in the mood to say I'm something. I've been hit at least a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you know what I'm name, you know what I'm named the show, right? What's the that? What you gonna name it? Uh grievances with friends. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Share your grievances with whatever part the word. Facts, facts. He's arguing uh, we wait till I get, Yeah, yeah, we should get we should do it when I uh when I come back because because you know in the new barbershop I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a grand piano in the office. You know what I'm saying? In the in the barbershop, we got a grand piano with that motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, let's go. So your son will be doing his uh lessons uh he's gonna play there. the piano before the show. That's how we can open the show. He's gonna play the song. He's gonna come in because he goes to bed at seven thirty. So okay. he's gonna think it's the coolest thing in the world. Lincoln, you want to stay up for ten more minutes? Lincoln, you want to stay? Up? Oh my God! He'll say he's gonna think it's the cool. I'm say Lincoln, if you do great in school, I'm gonna let you play. I'm gonna let you open up the show. And he's already doing great in school, you know. So, anyways, man, we're gonna have some fun, man. I, I love talking about that Kevin Samuel stuff, man. That'd be a great topic for tomorrow. You know what I mean? We love that trauma shit. We love. Oh my Ah, we love it, you know. But but yeah, man. Just waiting on Kyle. That's all I'm doing. Waiting on Kyle. In the words of great philosopher DB Fredro. Mm-hmm. 
Play the song, Fred. I got you, big homie. I got you. Three girls and one boy, huh? You got it. You got it done. You got it done, man. I respect you grinding for your family too, man. Yeah. Stay grinding. Hey, it was not a job I turned down from 2000 to 2010. I couldn't. Teaching, hustling, picking up. Hustling meaning not selling drugs, but hustling, doing to make shit work, you know? Training people, selling product, you know what I mean? What's up, Kane? We missed you tonight, Hold you on. know? And uh, not, nothing I turned down for 10 years. God down the through. Dre will tell you. All right, go upstairs. The conference final starts tomorrow, too, right? Man, I like Boston. You like Boston? You do? Who they playing? Peoples Hernandez. Who, who they playing? The Heat. Who? The Heat. Who's the other team? Miami? Miami? Yeah. Wow. I can tell him going to show his ass, man. Upstairs. So we're gonna have Boston and Golden State in the finals. Oh, upstairs. Phantom KB, appreciate you, dog. Oak Park, man, I appreciate you, man. Tino, cooking with the champ tomorrow, 8 45, 9 o'clock. Come on in here. Let's have a good time. OG Bruce, Jeremy Burt, Brother Cole, S. Whitaker, man, appreciate you, man. Was antidepressant, which is directly related to all mass murder. He's a sick man, Mr. Whitaker. Sick man, Mr. Whitaker. Tino the Great, man. ASI Motors, man. Auto Swap INC. R West. Dana Jones. You know we appreciate you, man. Matt. Yo, yeah. Hey, you know what interview I was listening to today? Myron Roll on the on the pivot. I, I enjoyed it. Cause now I got an hour in the car now, you know what I mean? So I just, is it? just a further away. I'm further away right now. So got an hour up and an hour back. So appreciate you, Don. Appreciate you, Don. You in Detroit? Moss number one is in Detroit. Michael Max, save the fucking nation of Islam. Save they ass. Man. Man, Catherine Massey, man. Rest in peace, Catherine Massey. Love y'all, man. Totally appreciate y'all. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about Kevin Samuels tomorrow, man. Black people love that trauma. We need that. We need to we need to 10 count. We need what? The bills. Facts. Facts. Fact. And Deontay Wilder got a statue May 25th in Alabama. I would go. But um no, you should I'll, go. I'll be doing a lot of work on the home that week. Oh, that's right. yeah. Love y'all, man. Love y'all, man. See y'all tomorrow.